everybody. It's been a while. Too we've uh, we've we've been told off a lot. I've been told yeah. off a lot. Me too. Where's the next painting stream, as? <laughs> fucking hell. Where's it, the it, next it's fucking a, painting stream, as? Why, it's a very why niche, is your audience, very dedicated audience? Why is your audience all oh. ogrens? <laughs> oh, no, well, <laughs> Excuse me, we prefer the term black people over here. All oh, right. Oh my god. <laughs> I disavow that immediately. I avow it twice. Sorry, it, I wasn't. I thought it was. <laughs> wait a minute. That cancels it out. That means it's. That's oh, what wait, I, wait, wait, wait. We take told. all of that back. I got told. <laughs> Why is the left so racist? Yeah, great question. So, I know. before we get into it, did you see that fucking take about Tyranids? <laughs> yes. Why does oh. he hate Jewish people? <laughs> Wait, Nick. the Tyranids are Jews now? That, that's literally this guy's opinion, right? I'm going to read it out to you. I didn't know they were in a Monday lending, but okay. <laughs> it's just so preposterous, right? It's so fucking preposterous. This guy's like, uh, you know, the uh, you know this Bits Hammer guy, he's got me blocked, so I can't see what he said, but he's obviously been like, eh, everyone who likes Warhammer's racist. Uh, and then this guy replies to him, yeah, especially when the Tyranids are a racist dog whistle to represent Jews like me. <laughs> I want to know what Tyranid he personally identifies as. But I, I want to know. I want to know his train of thought. Like, how does this it's, like gargantuan, galaxy-spanning super org organism represent Jewish people? Now, I'm, I'm aware there there are lots of unflattering stereotypes because I've watched a few J.K. Rowling films. Um, like the Tyranids, from like a substantive point of view, don't seem to represent Jewish people. Like they just, I just don't see how that maps. So I really want to explore his thought, but he's locked oh. all of the comments and he's not replying to anyone, which is really annoying. I wonder I why. Want, I want that explained. <laughs> I okay. <laughs> the if, I get, if I get canceled for this, guys, I love you all forever. <laughs> but I, I ha this is a genuine question. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, isn't there a Tyranid unit called a Zog? No, I don't think so. There's Zone Thropes. Maybe. I thought maybe that was it. I thought maybe there was like some Zog. vague, unintentional reference to something which could be a derogatory slang term uh, i think you have i mean to really reach yeah i mean to me zog just oh. sounds like some sci-fi random o name I, I wouldn't have even yeah. known that i wouldn't know that at all there's like, zotes there's zotes zotes yeah the, zotes. that's not it but that's not what i was saying i thought there was yeah. okay yeah, i'm just zone throat zotes Maybe, i'm what? uh I can't think of what else it would be. I have no I, I idea. Yeah, exactly. Normally when someone's like making like a comparison like that, you can at least see the rough outline of their sort of really racist statement. But like, <laughs> I don't even understand what he's trying to get at. <laughs> like what? Either. Uh, uh, you know, like in what structure does like a Jewish family represent a hive tyrant? It's just the... a race. It's just a, a race for victimization. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah it's... To be but fair, to be fair, lictors may be hiding in the attic or behind the walls. I'm just saying that <laughs> they, they they're hard to find. <laughs> they yeah, but they, they, they the obviously represent lictor. Eastern Europeans, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eastern European women are not a lot tidy. That's tidy. so. Great. I'm not saying they're not. <laughs> Fantastic. But the, but the point is right. The, the quote tweets on this right. This tweet at the at the time at the time of of writing as it were it's uh it's on a tiny thread it's got 14 retweets it's got 47 likes it's got 470,000 views there's 47 anti-semites there <laughs> but 470,000 people have looked at this and gone what the fuck oh is my god about? what <laughs> that's an that's an amazingly bad ratio i know yes it's, it is it restricted re replies? Yes. yes. Oh, the replies of course. So the quote tweets are just gold. Like, <laughs> the, the top one is just like this guy with like, you know, the woman looking around at the mathematics. Well, it's Pepe looking around the mathematics. Just, <laughs> what did Zia mean by this? You know, like, like, no one can work out what this means. <laughs> you know? It's like, I, I, I mean, look, I'm pretty racist. 
And I cannot. <laughs> I'm pretty racist, and even <laughs> I'm offended by that. One, one of the replies to this there. is, "Look, man, I, I know some unironic national socialists, and they don't compare Jews to tyrannids. <laughs> like, it's a, I don't understand your point. You know? they, like, there needs to be one of the like legit Nazi parties." To come out and tweet and be like, whoa, 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 yeah, this yeah, is yeah, too yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. This is too far. <laughs> we draw the line here. Okay. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you move in on our turf like this? Well, like, the, we got we got we got <laughs> university think... people claiming that orcs are black people. Now yeah. Dungeons and Dragons are saying mixed races are racist. That's right. Yeah, they did, didn't they? So now mixed races yeah. are racist. Uh, orcs are black people. Did, did, um, did, did there's another. Is it elves or elves or something or other indigenous? There's some indigenous stuff going on as well. Right, right. So but did did we ever get a resolution on the um, mixed race? Uh, is racism because i remember arch covering this and i was literally like arch i actually don't understand this normally i understand the logic that they're using right, yeah, um, right. but i actually just like this tyranny thing i don't understand why they say it which is unusual because i'm an expert in these things so <laughs> yeah like yeah. i thought i'm an expert in fucking moron and the yeah. writing <laughs> exactly this is my I job guess... and i still don't understand yeah i thought it's racist to be opposed to mixed race yeah. Yes, that's right? like, what I thought. Like I, I am, I am fervently in favor of miscegenation. I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. I have no I problem with it. Like I think it should be legally mandated. <laughs> yeah, I think like in Paraguay. Every, I think every anime <laughs> gamer needs to be issued a non-Asian but alternative race wife. No, <laughs> I, like, I, why I, I, look, I need, well, because uh, if you I'm gave an, them an. Asian if you gave them an, here, okay. Well, I know, but if you gave every anime addict an Asian wife, they would just be in heaven. So I think you need to <laughs> oh, no, specifically we to deny happy. them that. Oh, come on, Mike. <laughs> that seems unfair. I'm not being a bro here. I cannot do it. <laughs> Dude, come on, man. I cannot abide. <laughs> I thought you had my back on that. Come on, man. Bro, you, this look, is a punishment. <laughs> there are special exceptions, uh, as you can fill out Form 86A. It's 296 pages long. There is a I'll multiple choice quest, uh, question. Uh, and if you if you get it right, of course, you mm -hmm. will you will receive your Asian wife by mail. Come on, I, son. I hate bureaucracy, but. Yeah. <laughs> I'm British. We are just talking about bureaucracy yesterday. And we're like, uh, I was talking about one of my favorite Doctor Who episodes, Deep Water. And I said, it's just really, it's really British and really funny that they have this thing that when you die, you just go into this guy to fill out paperwork. Now you're oh, dead. Let's fill out some no. paperwork. <laughs> oh God, I would literally like no, kill me twice. <laughs> oh, I fucking hate paperwork. Oh, I had to uh, apply for a passport for my kid. He's going, Ooh. he's going on a a mission trip, and he had a passport in the past, mm -hmm. but it expired a long time ago. And they're like, mm -hmm. "Where's his passport now?" I'm like, oh, I don't fucking know. I have no <laughs> I idea. Celtics like, is a Mexican. If you if you have had a passport ever in your life, you have to reapply for a passport in person. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't have the original, no matter how expired it is, you have to fill out a form that it was lost or stolen and explain where it went. Hang on a second. Hang on. Sorry. Hang on. I just need to take a very short trip just south of the US-Mexico border and then walk across. <laughs> yes. So I'll be given everything for fucking <laughs> yeah, free, actually. Yeah. You shits. You know, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, and it it could take seven to nine weeks. That's the expedited version. Seven to nine weeks. Three fucking months. And I'm wait, like, hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. So wait a minute. I couldn't if I wanted to. If I wanted to to have the poison in my veins, which are not pure blood for life. If I wanted to have the poison in my veins, I couldn't have flown to your country legitimately mm -hmm. and been accepted into your country uh, until it's going to change sometime this month. However. If I flew to fucking Mexico, I could have just walked straight in, no questions asked, given some money, given a, a nice Google phone. No, but a you nice know what would have happened? Vineyard. You know what would have happened yeah. as if <laughs> well that, that would have been quick in all fairness, though, brief. You would yes. show up with a caravan of like 20,000 people, right? <laughs> yes. And you'd be walking along all jolly, and the border agent would stop you. Like you'd you'd cross the border, like uh, cross the river with everybody. I don't know how they come in, but you'd cross in, and he'd stop you, and everybody would be just flowing past constantly. And he'd be like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, 
I'm sorry. Uh, do you have a passport? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, no. Me no speak English. Me no, yeah, me no speak <laughs> like, English. No, you can't. You can't do that. You can't come in here. And he'd be like, but there's, there's uh, this thing going on, and he. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, I yeah. we don't need to get into details about yeah. this, but I'm going to need you to stop and turn around and go back because we just do not allow people to come, you know, across the border willy nilly here. That's ridiculous. This is a this is a this is a sovereign nation. You're like, no, they're literally walking across right now. Look, I, we're not going to. I don't want to quibble about this. What this if I did a law, did Trudeau? A what if I, what if I did a Trudeau? Would I get in then? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. but you have to go a little lighter. Okay. <laughs> you have to shade it down a bit. He did go full. <laughs> I mean, full. My, yes. My man went Abaddon blackface. Like, I just think he, <laughs> how every he went week. full out. He went full out Johnson, didn't he? You know, <laughs> yeah, but for like a month, like every week, there was a new and different picture of him in blackface. I'm just yeah. amazed by that because. There's not a single picture of me in blackface because I'm not a fucking theater kid. I, you, you, well, I did theater, but there's never a picture of me in blackface either. I didn't do theater, and there very wasn't much a massive is, racist. There very much is a picture of me in blackface. So <laughs> let's, let's yeah. calm down a little bit. Now, Nick, on the other hand. Woo! <laughs> um, I, uh... <laughs> Mine, of course, is is easily explainable and perfectly no, reasonable. I got context. I got context. I do, of course. I was dressed up as my best friend at my house as a joke, and I'm wearing. And it just so happens my best friends happen to be black. No, my best friend is Drexel. He's a oh, yeah, giant black yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. I stole his clothes. Uh, I I bought a fake afro from Walmart and uh, and the black face paint, and I put it on. I invited him. Uh, I invited him. We had like five friends over for a Halloween party, mm. and I I had this theme going. It were five dollar mm. costumes. So the previous this is the year... video you're gonna send to YouTube when they totally fucking eat you, isn't it? Yep. Uh, they they, <laughs> they say we'll send us a video explaining, and this will be it. This will be the <laughs> long rambling, honestly, officer. I swear, I swear, <laughs> you have like bollocks. I have long identified as a black man. Here's the proof. <laughs> you cannot remove yeah. me. <laughs> so, so you could just I, no, but can't you just say now you're transracial? Yeah, of course. Uh, no, that's what that's, I am. That's somehow racist. But uh, oh. it's, it's not. It's not sexist to be transgender, but right. it is racist to be transracial. That's very interesting, isn't it? Mm, that don't make a lot of sense. Yeah, this this was the Hypatia controversy in 2017. So I have uh, we we invite like six people over. Uh, and I, there was one piece of the costume that we deemed too offensive for photos. So, we, <laughs> I, so, I, actually, <laughs> so I actually removed it. It was a sign that I was wearing that said world's gayest cheerleader. I'm like, well, <laughs> that's a bit, that's a oh, bit that's much. A <laughs> that's a, no concept. That I draw the line of bigotry, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Because it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> offensive at all. Like I don't I don't know if the world realizes how fast, like how quick of a heel turn blackface went from completely acceptable to the literal worst thing you could do. But if you need help with it, just watch the Man Show and Jimmy Kimmel doing blackface yeah. oh, yeah. all the time as Carl Malone. Well, I mean, just look literally at the pr Prime Minister of Canada. Like, right. Mm -hmm. Literally in his lifetime, you know, it's suddenly become a, an unacceptable sin. Even the most progressive can get, get got by it. But uh, yeah. like, anyway. But they never so, um, actually get got. They just get called out and then forgiven well, for, yeah. for their, yeah. you know, they, they do their prostrating, uh, I'm yeah. so sorry. I well, was Trudeau ignorant. didn't even do that, did he? It's so weird. He got, he got really light touch with it. Well, he, yeah, yeah. He well, might have, so maybe just called in the Cuban connection. So did uh, <laughs> the Cuban connection. Oh, it's done. <laughs> Yeah, how's it? There's loads. It's it's kind of wild to be honest. You know, you say the N word five years ago once, and you never hear the end of it. Justin Trudeau prances around every fucking day of his life in blackface, and no one cares. All I do these days is um, I just Mountain quote endless. stuff that you said that got you canceled just because <laughs> I know I won't. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, speaking of speaking of getting canceled, what well, I mean, oh yeah, apologize. For standing up for an LGDP, uh, LGT, mm. LBG, <laughs> LGBTQ2 plus. 
Sorry, Dave, Very convincing, Mr. Trudeau. <laughs> he drops in the two plus. Uh, I, I apologize to the uh, 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 the BLT. No, no the. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> BLT, hold the mayo. No, wait. Listen, listen. This is a sign of true conviction, okay? Oh, he did hold the mayo. <laughs> you can tell he really cares about this issue because he can't fucking remember what it is. Yeah. God, I hate these people. But in all so, fairness, when he started the speech, it was the L. <laughs> I believe it. And then by the end of the speech, it was the LGBTQIA plus two <laughs> wolf speak whatever spirit. Oh, I saw uh, such a great article. Um, it was either yesterday or the day before. What the fuck? Oh, my brain's breaking. Hold on. I shared it on Twitter. Uh, it was related. Hold on. Let me get it real quick. Sometimes my brain, man. Just oh, yeah. Lego in bags now, and they number the bags, and they tell you which bags to open, and I still can't find a thing. Kids have it so damn it's easy. I know. Yeah. When, we were ki- when we were kids, you just opened the Lego. Oh, this is it. This is it. This was um, is an article in Forbes written oh, yeah. by a uh, psychologist. It said, three dead giveaways you're dealing with a woke fisher. Oh, I covered this on the podcast. What's a woke? Oh, what's a woke? What's a woke? <laughs> I mean, literally, fisher. Or yeah, is it so, a no, no it's no, it's no. someone who is trying to date woke people but 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 is not woke themselves. So they why Whoa. would you want to? Oh, that was my response. I'm like, why would you look for someone allergic to fun? I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh I was but looking then, for as many red flags as I could collect. I mean, what the fuck are you doing? You're gonna be pegged in a week. <laughs> <laughs> but the the best part is um, yeah, that's the plan. when you read the three mm. things, the three dead giveaways. They are exactly every woke person on Twitter exhibits yes. all three of these things. It's like, are two of them retarded? Yes. One, one of them is literally you're obsessed with their social media and getting validation from likes. Oh. And it's just like, uh, and they don't do anything in the real world. This is like, ooh. And so then a lot uh, of people are going to feel called out by that. The other one was, um, it was uh, only a surface level understanding of every issue, but no real <laughs> commitment or deep understanding of any issue. <laughs> So good. I was like, this is perfect. Oof. Oof. <laughs> <coughs> oh man, I was I was dying reading that article. It made me really happy. Oh, it was good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. really you know, they've been writing those articles for literally years now. So you can only imagine that dating as a woke person, like an actual woke person, must be a nightmare. No, like, just, I can't. I, can't. I want to make the checklist book for them. Like, so because I think it would sell okay. Like it wouldn't sell great, but it'd sell okay to be like. Here are all the things you have to do to actually make sure you are dating ethically in 2023. I love uh, that that doesn't already exist. I bet that already exists. I'm so sure what does dating ethically mean? <laughs> but, yeah, that's the point. Not it doesn't mean anything as <laughs> of white supremacy and oppression. What? I've you, just you... made that up, but that is what it would mean. Oh right. no! Fair. I mean, <laughs> though, you could. You know, I'm right, right? Then. Yes, it would have been. Yeah, it would have sounded absolutely fine. Yeah. Yeah. That is the weird. That is the weird thing. Well, that's how bullshit the whole fucking world. And the thing is, it is a religion, isn't it? Right. Oh, you know, it, it really, that article really comes across like, it's like, wow, this is a real cult. You know, like check, watch out, they've got all of your beliefs. And it's like, no thanks. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm or, or they can't, but they can't agree with everything you say. They have to ah, agree, yeah. but with nuance. Yes. They're, they they must you agree. An essay. But it, Yep, they must agree, but they must have a nuanced position. Otherwise, they're lying. Yeah. Can you? Oh, I can't even imagine. It's not, no amount of sex in the world is worth the effort. I don't think you'd be having any anyway. Would you? That's just the thing. You should be off with a polygamous boyfriend. It'd be be every eight seconds asking for continuing consent. Yeah. Can I keep going? Can I keep going? Can I keep going? (laughs) Man, I can't imagine that there's anything less sexy a woman would like than that. Yeah, like if 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 literally women's revealed preferences are anything to go by, like like Twilight or like fucking Fifty Shades of Grey or anything like that, this is not what they're after. <laughs> like, yeah, I I could I just I've always gone through that scenario in my mind. It's like okay, so you're sitting there. It's like, may I move close to you? May I place my hand <laughs> oh, on your thigh? 
I'm like, not a woman, but this is making me cringe and dry up. <laughs> yeah, my, my vagina is <laughs> becoming dry. <laughs> my ovaries are shedding yeah, eggs, yeah. eggs at record pace. Yeah, just yeah. Like cringing and just like, oh, and I'm like, God, how is this happening? And uh, that's that's the expectation. It's so crazy. So, you know, I just made my wife sign a consent form for everything we could ever possibly do (laughs) and just held it over her for the past 18 years. I'm like, you You, you would have to have a a, a witness and two people to sign the the affidavit afterwards so they could watch the sex and make sure that it was fully consensual. Right. But this this fucking... The best part would be to refuse the consent that you allowed them to watch and then me to them in revenge later. But you can see why the younger generations are just not getting laid, right? Like you can oh. totally see why. Like if this was my dating life when I was their age, I'd be like, "Fucking no!" You'd way. be petrified of being oh. knock at the door from the police saying, "I'm gonna complain about you." What? But also, it'd just be way too much fucking hassle. Yeah, like I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to do here. This is just too much work. I'm just gonna go uh, play a video game instead. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the Henry Campbell's said, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Basically. So I'd much rather play video games than socialize with people now. If I, uh, if I was, women. <laughs> you know, like well, eighteen, I mean, he's, he's got himself a you know really nice, really nice last. So, well, I've got no surprise. I mean, good, good him. Yeah. If if I were eighteen to twenty now, thinking through this, it's like I imagine I would be searching for like older women. Like that would make so much mm. sense just to mm. like no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with someone who is beyond this weird phase. Uh, mm-hmm. Or or who was too old to have this weird phase, you know, like women in their yeah. late thirties or something. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. uh, yes, you know they'll they're down to party anyway, so it'll be great. But yeah. uh, I I could not imagine dating a current a, you know a current young woman um, as a young man or well I mean obviously I can't imagine that now either because yeah just in case dating, my wife but... is listening. <laughs> uh, definitely sweetheart, can't, can't I, even imagine, darling. We wouldn't be dating, sweetheart. It would just be a one-time thing, okay? <laughs> wow. But uh, but uh, it, seriously, I I genuinely do feel bad for young people. Just oh yeah, like, the the world they have to live in is just so different from the world I got to grow up in, and I really do empathize. Yeah, I I don't know how to navigate it. I I think uh, I. I, I simultaneously understand and don't understand the like, mm. uh, you know, the whole like walking away thing mm. because like I like women way too much to consider a life alone, yeah. but I also like get the petrification that's going yeah. on. Yeah. And I don't know how to reconcile those two things. Yeah. So I'm no help to any of those guys. No, oh. I, but like I said, it's just, oh, it's such a minefield. And this is, this is, like with say a well-meaning woman as well you know as a, a young woman who's been like brought up in this culture but it doesn't hate you and doesn't want to see you in jail you know right. imagine if you got some psycho bitch you didn't realize and then she's got all of the weapons of feminism to fucking destroy you well and the other thing you have to worry about is what if they're cool now yeah what if they yeah. change yeah. i mean we saw well, this isn't a, a, a direct example but we saw the e Jean carroll stuff with trump and yeah it's like this is 30 years ago. There's no one to corroborate this story. The only yeah. thing she has is two very close friends who she allegedly told contemporaneous with the event. But there's no <laughs> proof that that actually happened. What a standard like, of evidence. What a standard yeah, isn't of evidence. That just hearsay though. Five million dollars out, and that's the standard of evidence. And Fuck the best off. part is how inconsistent the verdict is because yeah. so she describes the story which we don't have to go back through, but the, the story includes a sexual assault, which is uh, non-penetrative, and then a rape, which is penetrative. And the jury decided that the penetrative part was not true, but that the sexual assault part was true. And so therefore the defamation was applied because the sexual assault part was, it's like, wait, so you heard her story, you believed half of it? How did that, <laughs> how did that work? She's like, definitionally a liar. Like, like she's li- literally come in and lied to you. And you're like, but the other half of the lie, we're going to take that. Yeah, that part sounds right. But the part where he actually goes too far. I mean, we wouldn't we wouldn't expect a Trump to go too far like that's That's <laughs> ridiculous. You know, so he only did this part. That that oh, was the maddening. weirdest thing. It's maddening. <laughs> and again, and so, if you're a young man watching this, dude, that could be you. That could yeah, be yeah, yeah. Man. That's the scary thing. You know, that so could be you. That could be you when you're an old man 
and you've yeah. established a family and a business and uh, become the fucking president of the free yeah. world or whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's only the president, you know. I mean, like he'll be okay. You won't be okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. Luckily, oh, Trump can absorb a five million dollar hit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no one else could. And and the best thing is he still maintains his state. I've never met this woman. I don't know her. Never seen her. Yeah. Look at her. Kind of gross. Not my type, really. <laughs> Not my type. <laughs> Trump comes out. I wouldn't even, you know, like. Oof. He did. He said that. It was beautiful. And, Trump, and I've got, I've got every, patent on that. You owe me royalties. Everybody is so offended by the, like, how how dare you? It's like, do, look, I mean, I wouldn't either. It's just hideous. Do you, do you want me to? <laughs> it's like, and, what are we and, arguing here? What do you describe, you know, the the whole like, uh, well, grape is power. It's not about attraction yeah. or sexuality. It's like, but the scene that was described was not, was not the power play. This was, this yeah. was a sexual encounter that was, um, it was like almost consensual the way she described it. Like she described bringing him into the dressing room and stuff like that, Yeah, which is such a weird thing. It's like, how do we get to, what, why was she bringing him to the dressing room just to like get a peck on the cheek? Like what's. What's going oh, no, no. on this, here? This sounds just like, uh, do you remember David Silverman, the president of the American Atheists? Uh, uh, no. He, he got me too right, by this um, problematic glasses feminist. I don't, I don't know anyone I, whose name well, isn't mentioned in the Bible, so but well, I'm, I'm interested. Her story is, is I, you know, I invited him up to my uh, apartment at like a conference. We were getting off, fingering, blah, blah, blah. And then he got up and left uh, because I told him to leave. And I feel violated. And it's just like, <laughs> so he did nothing wrong. You invited him to your place. You asked him to stop. He stopped and he left. And now that's a me too, is it? That, Are you that fucking insane. Aziz Ansari had that. Like, I don't like that guy. Yeah. He's kind of a weasel, yeah, 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 but yeah, same thing know. happened to him. And it, yeah. and you hear the woman's story and you're like, wait, so you give him like four blow jobs, apparently yeah. uh, you invite him to do all this stuff. And in the moment you say, you know what? I'm actually not good with it. He's like, cool. Buys you an Uber and sends you home. And you're like, this, this was right. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry, this is all consensual right up until the end. And after like the whole thing's consensual, you're fucking liars. You know, you're fucking liars. Yeah. The it's, it's a, it's a nutty place. to be. I don't know. I don't know how you're supposed to manage any of this stuff. Uh, like I said, bad luck, young bros. Like, yeah, just just keep painting your Warhammer. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, just play, <laughs> keep playing your video games. Yeah. Keep building your Lego and painting yeah. your toys. That's Grab you your need. minis. Keep them secret. Keep them safe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't let these bitches get them. <laughs> yeah. Take half of them. <laughs> that would be so mean. What God, if there was wanna, a... Yeah, can you even imagine getting married to this woman who's scornful of you playing Warhammer? And she's like, right, I want your elder. Yeah, that'd be the, oh, no! the I want your space marines. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have no! to keep the squats. <laughs> and she'd convince the judge that the Primark models are all of equal value to other models. Oh, she'd take all bitch. of them. <laughs> Taking the Gulliman. Did you uh did either of you happen to get a um a lion? Well, you know what? Someone uh, ages ago 3D printed me a lion and uh, I have not yet painted it because I wanted to save it until I was really good, uh, which right. is why I haven't yet painted it still. But I have it primed. So after I've done the the old art that I've got at the moment, I'm going to do them then. But the new model does look great, doesn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. I, I uh, did not get the figure, but I did manage to get a copy of the book, um, oh, yeah. the, the limited edition. I haven't read it, oh. I but it's pretty. They're also their books are oh, so pretty. Well, yeah. But I mean, they uh, know what they're doing, don't they? Yeah. Fucking whores. But someone sent me a <laughs> <laughs> someone sent me Seriously, a why are we... yeah. <laughs> I'm not wrong and you know I'm not wrong. No, they're yeah, awful. No. I... You just say what I'm thinking. So yeah. I, got, I got I got thousands of dollars of them right here to prove that they are one hundred percent correct. It's all of them. Yeah. I have yeah. all of them. Yes. <laughs> Everything they produce is just slutty as far as i'm concerned yeah and uh that's why i'm painting it right now but uh a viewer of mine did send me a fully painted vulcan heresy Ooh. era vulcan and it's uh it's gorgeous nice uh yeah. it goes with my heresy era magnus that someone else sent me i have beautiful painted minis that other people did <laughs> <laughs> I've well, got I, put, I mean all my I did. 
And oh, my yours stuff's are awesome. in storage now, apart from the army that I had professionally painted, which I've still got displayed in the display cabinet. So why is does that the one your... that you told me you painted, you lying bastard? I only I, look. I I said it as a joke. I only so implied I it. <laughs> I immediately said no, I didn't do that. You did. <laughs> so I was what? totally convinced it was yours. No. Why does I your? Might, I didn't want. Go on, sorry. Oh, no, I, I was just wondering why does your Warhammer painting go on hibernation for the summer? Um, I just can't. I can't. Well, it normally goes on hibernation during the winter, and it comes back out during the summer. Oh. But because I've been doing like a complete overhaul of the whole house oh um, you this, fucking this... piece of garbage by the way we'll get to that but go on okay uh this whole <laughs> section <laughs> down here was just stacked up with warhammer and i wanted it clear i wanted it clear that makes sense so, okay. so it, it, it uh it's all it was all boxed anyway so we just got it got picked up put in storage and that whole area is like clear now and it's Mwah. Mm. Yeah, mm. so why am I an asshole? Well, well first I mean, of I all, you of you posted that beautiful Ben Cisco. Oh yeah, uh, and uh, Ben Cisco happens to be my wife's favorite Star Trek character. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I had to immediately. She didn't know about it. Uh, she she'd had a bad day the other day, and so I uh, I was feeling bad. I saw that that day, and I was like, God damn it! So I bought it. Mm. So that that wasn't the cheapest thing in the world. It wasn't super expensive, but it wasn't cheap. And uh, so I got that. It brightened her day. Her smile was huge uh, oh. as she sat there fiddling with, you know, you getting You bought the... me a black, man. <laughs> God damn it, as I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there was that. But it did make a day. Could have wanted. This is only the most mild version of why you're an asshole. The real one is you are Ooh. posting these fucking Gen 1 Transformers. Yeah. And I hate Look at you. He's totally you. unrepentant. Look at him. Do you know, uh, uh, I know, absolutely, 100%. Down there, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Down there, but you haven't seen yet. Yeah. Oh, my Cause God. Because the, cause the, animate, the, the animated version of Wheeljack arrived, and that's now in the cabinet. Down there yes. that arrived today is uh, G1 uh, Thrust and uh, Ramjet. Nice. And tomorrow, the Fans Toys Blaster arrives. Hmm. Which is they, just going to look divine. Like I saw RC. And oh I yeah. Was like, damn girl, you're looking good. In there's pink. the. There's the. Uh, that's the. Oh. Yep. That's yep, the Takara masterpiece RC. The fans' toys masterpiece RC is in uh, the fans' toys RC is in the bedroom. And you that's, got those uh, the Insecticons up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Insecticons are up there. And I'm just sitting uh, there. Nightbird. Nightbird's there. I'm just sitting there remembering Ooh, the dude. movie, and uh, now I'm gonna make my my kid watch uh, the Transformers animated movie <gasps> with me. Oh my oh, god, yeah. he's gonna cry! How old is he? Uh, Fifteen. He, he's, gonna, no, no, he's, he's gonna, gonna, he's gonna, gonna cry. cry. <laughs> he's not gonna cry, right? Oh, he, he's not he will. Have the same level of emotional attachment to Optimus Prime. That's and true. Megatron as you will. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He'll be like, "Who are dude, these characters?" When when Optimus goes gray, every time I'm oh, like, dude. "I don't cry now, but I remember crying." And it happens so early in the movie, and it's so I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was I'm listening scared. to uh, uh, you got the touch hit my playlist the other yeah, day yeah. while I'm yeah. driving with my kid, and I'm just like belting it out, and he's looking at me like I'm an idiot, which of course <laughs> I am. That's fine. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, well, as revenge for this, you have to understand how awesome this scene is. Oh, the Autobot yeah. City is getting ravaged by the Decepticons. Rise, Rodimus Prime. But the, no, this was uh, this is when Optimus lands at the beginning. If that's when you got the touch first place. Mm. Optimus lands. Autobot City's getting ravaged. They're shooting him. It's just bouncing off the grill of his fucking truck. And then he launches up while transforming and blasts like five of them. And it's, oh, God, it's so awesome. Oh, oh that yeah. scene. Mm. Mm. And, they, and they, they, took, they did that at the beginning of Bumblebee. They did that exact transformation and spin, shoot and spin that he does in the movie. Oh, I, the see, I, never, I never saw Bumblebee. Uh, oh, dude, the first 10 minutes of Bumblebee, the Cybertron bit. Yeah. Dude, that's the, it's, it's the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. See, what, I, Michael I, Bay I, film. I lost. No, so no, much. no. He didn't do Bumblebee. No. Right. Okay. Yeah. I heard it was pretty good. My, my wife actually took my son to go see <laughs> it. 
Uh, and I, I didn't, but I, I'd become so disillusioned with the Transformers, uh, live action movies that I, after like the first one, I hated it so much yeah. that I was, okay, Bumblebee's the only movie that I liked. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll, on your recommendation, I'll, uh, I'll check it out. Yeah. There. Yeah. Check out Bumblebee. Cause they actually look like a lot of them actually look like G1 Transformers and they have a, the, the first segment, the first five minutes is on Cybertron and it's just full of, it's like got Wheeljack and Ratchet and a uh, brawn, uh, oh, cliff yeah. jumper, RC, um, opt obviously Optimus and Bumblebee. You got Shockwave, Soundwave, oh, yeah, all Soundwave. the Seekers. Uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely incredible. The beginning, and they all look like they're G one. Rampart, like Rampart's still my favorite Transformer. Wham, bloom, zam! He's just out there blasting everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that dude kills me every time. Do you know what I fucking hate, right? Is people like Movie Bob when it comes to talking about like Transformers and He Man and stuff like that, right? Because they're such cynical shits where they're like, you can tell when they were young, they really loved these things, right? Yeah. And now they've become like, you know, woke and skeptical of capitalism. And they're like, oh my God, these were businesses. They were used to make money off of me. And I'm like, yeah, right. they were right. good, and you yeah, got exactly. you got hey. you got entertainment out of it. Yeah, but it no, was no, a no, transaction. That, it was a no, transaction. Ex exactly right. But that that is actually fucking brilliant, right? Because you think about it. Okay, what what do I want out of media, right? When I'm watching stories being told, I want, uh, frankly, traditional Western heroic values, right? Yep, I right. want to see the hero being honest, noble, courageous, and self sacrificing, right? Uh huh. Optimus Prime. All yes. of those things, all the time. He man, yes. all of those things, all the time. Right? Yeah. These are these are the highest of masculine virtues, totally uncorrupted by other ideological considerations. Yeah. And they're doing it. Okay, they're doing it because they want my money. Okay, that's good because I want that product. Right? Yes. Yeah. I want you to show me the you know the apex of masculinity and how things should be in an ideal world. Mm -hmm. And that's what they present. And that's why I ended up loving. Right. Yeah. And, so movie Bob being like, yeah, but really, it should have been morally nuanced, and they should have actually been evil or corrupted. It's like, no, you fucks. We live in an evil and corrupted world. I don't want to see that all the time. Yeah, you yeah, know, I can I just see... look outside. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh, we need fat pride on TV. No, I've got representation of fats on my street, okay? Like, <laughs> I do not need <laughs> every day I walk outside. Oh, look, really normal people. I don't need to see that. You know, I want, I want to see the heroic ideal being represented when i'm watching a fantasy of some sort of a fiction and that's why these things were beloved but that's why we still think of these things in a beloved term now and then you got you got really midwit petty-minded bullshit takes like movie balls being like well they were just taking it for your money okay great <laughs> great yeah. that's it's it's literally like having a fucking court troubadour then right but it's not a troubadour you you are you are the king. You pay the troubadour to sing a song about X or Y or Z, and he does what he's told. Okay, great. That's all I wanted. You know, that's literally all I wanted. I didn't want to be manipulated. I didn't want to be propagandized at. I just wanted a traditional representation of heroic values. That's all I was after. Yeah, ba basic good and evil is fine. That's yeah. that's the whole point yeah, of it totally being great. fiction. <laughs> it's why yes. Lord of the Rings was literally voted the most popular book in England. You know, it literally is just that simple, you fucks. Yeah, that, that's the best part of it is uh, the moral failings of the good characters like Boromir uh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's it's punished. Ooh. It's punished, but in a redemptive way where he gets mm -hmm. to atone for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it makes it makes Boromir's character. Uh, my wife and I were talking about this. She's like, Boromir was such a good character. Yeah. His story it and his sacrifice is so dang important because it, you know, in, in a modern thing, he would have betrayed them and it would have been okay. Like it would have yeah. been never addressed. It would have been like, well, we forgive you Boromir for betraying us. And then it yeah. would have gone on because he's complicated and dark. It's like, no, no, no they're, no they're not complicated and dark. They just, <laughs> yeah. they just literally failed. And that's, that's fine. Heroes fail all the time. That's the, the whole hero story relies on the hero failing and then yeah. overcoming the failure later in some yeah. way or another. That's the arc. So let them fail. They don't have to be. They don't have to be a a, a dark hero, a troubled uh, a yeah. troubled person. And and I hate that we have to do that to everything yeah. now. It, exactly. It it makes it makes the entire archetype bastardized, right? Yeah. And so essentially, what they're saying is, oh, there are no heroes, 
And it's like, no, no, no. As a human being, I would like to believe there are heroes, actually. You know, yeah. and I was, I think it's important that we have, like, they always go on about representation matters. Like, okay, yeah, I agree with you. Representation does matter. Now, represent a genuinely good person, Hollywood, if you fucking that. can. Well, exactly. You know, if you're fucking capable of it, represent me a fucking good person. You don't know because you've never seen one, right? Is that what you're saying, you shit? I fucking hate it. Actually, yeah. That's absolutely, that's absolutely spot. They can't do it because they don't know how to write a hero because they've never known heroicism. And they exactly. certainly don't understand the hero's arc because yeah. they've never had anyone go through that redemptive arc. This is an industry yeah. where they've spent all their time fucking each other over. Yep. Yeah. Or fucking oh, yeah. each other. Can you even imagine? Can you even imagine the absolute fucking shark <laughs> tank that is Hollywood oh. at this point? Oh, God. I just oh, did a video wow. on Brie Larson today and it was quite oh, interesting just kind of going down the the sort of rabbit hole of man management that she's had yeah. that's just led her into this, this absolute fucking dead end of... Uh, beyond likable and they they don't know why everyone hates her they don't know and it's just like oh my god like a normal person ask a normal person like just just take a a very anonymous survey on the internet for fuck's sake yeah because it's like uh because it looks like if i walked up to her at a bar she would stab me yeah or spit at me or something I'm like, oh, right Jesus. like they just the you have made her into the coldest looking bitch that has yeah. ever lived, and and you wonder why people are like, oh wow, I don't want to see her on screen. It's like Brie Larson isn't, I mean, she's not the hottest chick ever, but she's not she's ugly by a woman. Yeah, she's, she's attractive woman. Yeah. yeah, and and it's like, ever she's, 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 she's got redemptive arc. She's got a redemption arc. Do you know what a redemption arc is? She has two redemptive redemptive well, arcs, it, as far as it, I can yes, tell. That's absolutely correct. <laughs> Gets her tits out in a movie. <laughs> exactly. That's, yeah. that's she starts an OnlyFans. That's that's her attempt. No, 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 not an OnlyFans. No, no, no. Right. Okay. But she 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 does a movie. And she gets enough. <laughs> well, you got to go I, watch uh, the movie. Yeah, you know. well, that's fair. Yeah, um, but it's the, like, but like what point... you were saying before with 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 movie Bob and the and the Transformer malarkey. Yeah. And it's just like yes, the, they were creating animated cartoons in an effort to sell you toys. Sure. However, producing the cartoon doesn't guarantee your money. No. It has to be earned. So they 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 yeah. created I mean it's all the same Thundercats, yeah. Transformers, yeah. all of it. Uh, sort of Omens. Give me sight all, beyond it was sight. All for a, a toy line. He-Man. He-Man was yeah. an egregious toy line. Who it's hilarious. Yeah. But the thing is, like, think about like what they just naturally fell back into, right? At the end of every fucking GI Joe or He Man, there was a moral lecture that yeah, was they had if to. You th that was by yeah. law. In the yeah, United I know, States. I know. Right? Yeah, yeah. But but what were the moral lectures? Okay, fine. They're, legally, they're they're obliged to give you a moral lecture. Okay, but what were they? They it, like go back. You can find the compilations on YouTube. Yeah, they're all totally totally respectable, right? They're right, all yeah. just like like perfectly. Like I don't. I, I mean, I'm gonna say liberal, but you know what I mean when I say that, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, don't it's just don't litter. Be decent. You know, yeah. like the conservative. You know, be decent, be honorable, be just. Like one of the He-Man ones goes on about the Magna Carta. And I, like obviously, as a kid, I would have no fucking idea what that means. But as an adult, I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. You know, I can't yeah. believe like oh, like God, literally the, the, the traditional Carter. like constitutional history of England is being represented in this kid's cartoon. <laughs> Like that's fucking amazing. That's great. That's such an amazing thing. And then you got movie Bob. Oh, they're just doing it for money. So I don't care. The fact they're doing it. And my just... kids or I, when I was young, got that you know imbibed into me the right values, the wholesome values. I'll take it, man. I'll I'll pay them. I will just movie Bob when he goes to his local supermarket and when he goes to the checkout and she starts zapping his, his shopping through, does yeah. he start going, you're just doing this for money. That's all you're doing it for. You're just scanning my shopping for money. That's all that's you're doing. literally what she, he have to do, right? You don't yeah. think there's any moral investment in serving me my food. You don't care if yeah. I starve. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you do. Bro, the food's right here. You're buying it. What's the yeah. problem? <laughs> the, well, and the other thing is they... Fact, they a bunch of factories. <laughs> they lack the uh, they lack the obvious awareness that they were doing yeah. it for money, and then going, why aren't there new things making any money? Yes, <laughs> because they stopped doing it for money. Like they yes. they can't go on. They can't keep making stuff at loss forever. And yeah. uh, and if they don't yeah. if they don't follow what people actually want to consume, then they're doomed to have 
the repeat of every recent show that has come out. Nothing is intriguing because nothing feels real. Nothing feels like it is going to teach me any lesson. And I yeah. like, so the oh, U.S. Those mandate- were good toys, by the way. They were good yeah. toys. Yes. Yeah, I agree. But the, so the, the U.S. did mandate, um, you know, that family programming had to have an obvious moral lesson. It either had to be in the show or it had to be uh, added at the end, which is why, you know, G.I. Joe didn't always have an obvious moral lesson. So they would put one on the end uh, and it was great. Yeah. But here's the here's the thing Demons about it was always at the end. Um, yeah. Fiction in general is always a moral lesson like the purpose of consuming media is to explore humanity and some level of morality now it's not it's not always a positive one but like there's nothing wrong with having that in there and now they're trying so hard to like gray space them out and it's it's like there's nothing wrong with having it in there if it's absent then the thing is hollow and empty yes because i mean aristotle literally called storytelling uh, a form of rhetorical argument like what you're saying is if the world was this way, then this would be how things are, right? Mm-hmm, right. And that's why we demand internal consistency. That's why we demand it makes sense. That's why we demand like um correlative action from and, and consequence. Like this is why Mauler has a career, right? Is this right. that he's he's appealing to and examining when he's going through his movie uh, ex- examinations. Mm-hmm. And so it's you know, this is the very bedrock of it. And they literally want to make it so that they can have their cake and fucking eat it, right? Brie Larson can be evil and treated like the hero. You know, she can abuse yeah, yeah. the people around her and be treated like it's like, sorry, no, the world doesn't fucking work that way. You know, life, reality doesn't work that way. And if you're making a rhetorical argument about reality, no one believes your bullshit. Right. Cause they can just they can just they can, try it out and see what exactly. happens. They can see for themselves that's not how the world works. Which is, uh, uh, I, I think, indicative of what we're seeing with the current generation having all of these weird rules that actually yeah. just amount to uh, basically a mandate of shame for all of their peers for yep. not for not following in line with whatever uh, myriad agenda they must all subscribe to, and then they notice that people don't end up liking them. That mm. any any friendships that they develop that are is based so weird. Yeah, they're they're. All of their friendships are based on performance, performance yeah. of these other things, not performance of like general nice friend things to do, like hanging out or talking to people. But no, you have to you have to check all the check boxes of caring about shit. Otherwise, you don't qualify as a friend. It's like, well, but yeah. that's not what it is. And they, they're experiencing that. And I think I think yeah, it's funny. They, they fuck each other over in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yep. No, there's no loyalty, no trust. No. Can't even I can't even imagine living a life so devoid of honor. To be honest, it's, no. It's, it reminds well, you don't me think about honor at all, right? You don't think about it, but you intrinsically know you should keep your word. Like you intrinsically know you never think, oh, I'm going to break my word. You, there's shame attached to it. But if you look at the way the left acts now, you see like the meltdown on bread tube and stuff. It's just like all it is is just shameless, dishonorable people fucking each other over for money. Yeah, oh, I've God. I've never seen the meltdown on bread tube. Oh, it's they, they, they all, the reason, the reason, <laughs> no, but the reason we don't hear from the bread tubers anymore is because the, the community collapsed in on itself. With yeah. Infighting and backbiting, right? It was just way worse than what happened with the skeptic community. You know, like we just stopped talking to each other, you know, but these, these people just started tearing chunks out of each other. And it's like, ugh. yeah. And, and you that, see that the, 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 when they made the atheist recently had a go at Gary, was trying to, was trying to ride on. Gary's yeah, yeah, is that what he was trying and, to do? And he, yeah, 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 and uh, he claimed that he he created uh, a commentary. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. amazing atheist created commentary. Yeah, he 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 created uh, getting a topic and talking about it. I, I mean, it's true that that has never happened on Earth prior never. to his uh, brilliant <laughs> design. Yeah, I, I I was I was just like oh master <laughs> i'm so glad you're here tj yeah <laughs> there are manuscripts that are thousands of years old that are literally commentary <laughs> like this has happened well, for no, oh, yeah 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 but the they didn't time... have they didn't have the internet he's the, <laughs> he's the he, he was the first person on the internet to create commentary i'm sure somebody commented on a pair of tits long no, before he commented no, he on anything <laughs> yeah, he was the first. you don't know what you're talking about 
Uh, you're right. He knows everything. What are you talking about? I, I don't have a <laughs> citation, so. Yeah. Exactly. See, no citation. Citation needed. Uh, just let's go through a few supers because uh, the, uh, the conversation is good yeah. and it's, it's flowing. Can, can you imagine even having a monetized channel, Nick? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, Mine gents, is still monetized. if you wouldn't mind. Oh, is it? Yeah, if somehow. you wouldn't All right. mind keeping my nearly removed, but still tonight. monetized. <laughs> yeah. Shit. I, yeah, I was I was completely deleted for three days, but like Internet Jesus, I came back with full monetization. He has risen. Not he only that, has risen. My warning strike was deleted. Oh, so uh, yeah. I have a completely clean slate on my channel now. I have no warnings and no strikes. So this is how you know that Nick's controlled opposition. Look. I'm not saying that I'm a I'm tyranid. Sorry. I'm just oh, wait, saying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but Nick, if, if I go profile here, you know. I'm just saying there's a reason I have this We're not going. talking small either, you know. It's, it's, <laughs> there, there is length going on. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I identify as Death Guard, so I, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, Dave Filoni's dog with a $2 says, please end me. You have no idea what he does to me. Uh, probably reads you his scripts, which is who's Dave Filoni. Uh, he's the guy that did Star Wars Rebels. Who's doing the Mandalorian and all that? He's basically um, Kathleen Kennedy's lap dog. So uh, he's the I, one that's I watched... killing all the legacy characters to push his own. I watched a bit of the Mandalorian. I didn't watch any of the um, Boba Fett one, but all I heard from all the commentary around it is this is so profoundly mediocre. <laughs> uh, it is. It, it actually makes the other Star Wars look. Um, well, it puts everything in perspective, right? It's like if all they can do is produce like the most mediocre uh, takes on Star Wars, it's like, isn't it just time to stop? Yes. Right? Well, it's just we're talking no, about I, I, one of the, the biggest movie franchises of all time. Yeah. That's now it's, a 30 minute show on a streaming network that's losing millions of subscribers every quarter. I mean, I'm so glad I'm not like a Star Wars fan, you know? Like, pretty. Oh. I don't I dislike would, Star Wars, but like I've never I been do, like a, but... a, a well, I mean, sort of sure, and you know, you're entitled to, but I, I've always been quite ambivalent towards it. You know, it seems it's you know, it's okay, it's a little space opera, and I'm happy with that. I don't, you know, it's not my thing. It's like childhood, see... man. Yeah, but I, I didn't really watch it when I was a kid, actually. So, like, I was an adult when I watched it. So, for me, it was just like with Harry Potter, actually. I kind of, I must have been the wrong generation or something, but I can totally understand why people like it, like with Harry Potter, actually. And so I just feel bad for these people who are literally watching their childhood favorites getting totally defiled to the point of like literally like banality now, right? It, a Star Wars thing is banal. No one cares. I just feel bad for them. Yeah, I mean the problem is that when if you look at like Star Wars is a is a apotheosis moment where in cinema you look at sci-fi pre-Star Wars and you look at sci-fi mm -hmm. post-Star Wars and and its impact is immeasurable. Uh, yeah. It's observable, but you cannot even describe the the levels of infinity of increase that it created. Yeah. And that's what I respect about Star Wars. But I don't like the story. I don't like the acting. I don't like the dialogue. And I don't think it's sure. particularly good. And I think its impact, uh, which is which is good, um, over inflates its value. Sorry to kill you. You know, I'm not trying to no, shit no, on no. your childhood as, but uh, that's that's how I see it. It's like the Beatles for me. Like I yeah. see what the Beatles yeah. did to music, and I don't like any of their albums. Same. So, I love the Beatles. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I love the Beatles moment. and Star Wars, and you just fucking shit on me. <laughs> But that, but Nick's right. You, you, like whether you like it or not, that's a personal judgment. But you can't deny the objective effect they had on these industries, right? Right. And you know, I I can see people's genuine love for these things, and I don't harbor any of these people any ill will. I don't want to see. You know, I would never touch. Well, the it Monkees myself. was a manufactured boy band. The Beatles weren't a manufactured boy band. Well, yeah, but sure. But like the the point being, people should be free to enjoy these things, right? Even yeah. if I don't like them, right? Yeah. You know, and. and Apart from like, current day Star Wars, because it's dog shit. Well, yeah, well, yeah, but that's the point, isn't it? You know, they've <laughs> they've deliberately screwed all of this, and like, I just can't get over the actors who are involved. Right? It's like, if someone came to me and was like, "Carl, do you want to play Obi Wan Kenobi?" And I'd be like, "I'm literally not an actor, but even if I was, I'm the wrong guy." Right? You know, it's be like come in and be like, "Do you want to play MLK?" But like, no, I'm the, I'm just the wrong oh, guy. Well, you know? you, Whoa, wait, I want to play MLK. I 
No, I will play Obi Wan. <laughs> right. Just, yep. just give me the, just give me the fucking paycheck, dude. But you're a Star Wars fan, and this means a lot to you, right? Dude, I I'll would, play Captain I would... fucking Marvel if they ask me. I'll just take the payday. Sure, but the thing is, Captain Marvel, no one gives a fuck about. But you know, Obi Wan Kenobi is literally a religious figure at this point you know so i i would just feel very disrespectful i wouldn't be able to do it i'd be like not for me you know let, let you, me all you have to do is just walk on and go hello there <clears throat> let me be one of the guys who kills the younglings or something i don't know you know <laughs> I well, want didn't, them... didn't you know in the in the in one of the latest star wars series the kenobi series didn't you know the overarching story for for reva who was one of the inquisitors the the evil inquisitors and her story was she was a Jedi youngling in the temple right. when Order 66 hit. Oof. And she was stabbed th through with a lightsaber by Anakin right. Skywalker himself before he was Darth Vader Poos. Yeah. And then she somehow survived. Don't ask. Oh, and she, she wanted revenge so badly that. She joined the Inquisitors. <laughs> she wanted revenge, by the way, on yeah. her youngling friends being murdered. Right. That she joined the Inquisitors and murdered Jedis what? to get closer to Vader. Oh, fucking hell. Jesus. Okay, well, that's just mental. Yes. It's stupid. Anakin Skywalker killed a bunch I'm of gonna, Jedi's. I need I'm revenge to, by killing a bunch of Jedi's. You said you, you said I, I, I'm going to uh, get revenge for the Jedi's by killing Jedi. Oh, you said Inquisitor, I and I got excited, mm. and then I realized Wrong you were talking about to, Star Wars, yeah. and I was like, oh, yes, yeah. okay, not. But, the, but this is my point. Like, I'm not just so those glad I'm not a fan of friend. this. Like, and I'm sorry for people who are. I, I actually do genuinely feel for them. Like, this is just embarrassing and heart heart rending. You know. Like seeing things you love get shat on purposefully. Again, like, and you know, movie bar will be like, oh, it was for profit. Yes, yeah, for fucking profit. They're shitting on you for profit and they're not even getting the profit. That's at least the just uh, result. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Winter Wolf CR7 with a $10 says, wish I could watch, but work is getting in the way. Also, if work wasn't in the way, I'd be painting either my nice. far sight towel. Or Grey Knights, enjoy, gents. Gay. Nice. Well, the Grey Knights. You know, I can, I can the Grey Knights the... are fine. The Tau gay. Tau gay. Not gay. <laughs> they're communist. So they're Commun gay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I repeat I, myself. <laughs> uh, you probably just in, like insulted a. I mean, a, I am sat here painting Eldar, so I'm not going to go too hard. On gay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Louis. The, Louis. The Griffin. Eldar. Gayed a god into existence. Yeah, <laughs> that's how gay they are. Well, that, Slanet, that's why Slanet Slanet just going, hey, hey. I can't, come on I can't now. Focus. Oh, on. It won't focus, but it's like, oh, there we go. There you go. Light Hold on, let me give you a one shot. Let me give you one shot. Nice. Nice. Looks good, dude. It's not too yeah. bad. I've been, I've been basically working on a color scheme for my Eldar. So I want I want something that's um, oh yeah. Did you go with the blue or the silver? You went with the blue. I went with the. I've gone for like a. I, I start with purple, then go through McCrag blue because it's a kind of purpley blue. To um this green, it's um uh scar snick green, right? So that that's yeah. a very light green to highlight, and so it's, it's this three colors I'm transitioning through. Um, the three color. To, it, it it takes a lot of work, but it looks interesting and the problem is that the light color is either the wrong color or it's too bright and it distracts and honestly i think the, the i like the sort of ice blue for the highlight for the the straight you know the, the the flutes and the helmet and stuff it looks nice but like i feel like it's distracting from the base armor and so i'm, I'm still not fucking happy with it <laughs> but i'm gonna finish it anyway and just see how it looks but like oh, i'm just pissed off man i can't get a good eldar color scheme uh, that's because they're out I mean, uh, Lewis Griffith with a 20 pound. Might be true. Says, be between true. you three, you take up an entirely unhealthy amount of my time. <laughs> Love your work, fellas. Keep it up. Glad we could help. Thank, Thank you so brother. much, man. Uh, Party Almzivi with a two dollar says, former poll man, Jews are closer to Dark Eldar, no? 
Oh, oh shit. Well, I'm not going to make I'm that comparison. Certainly not but, the, but, on the, that. but the point is I've never seen a, a pole man uh, ever use a Tyranid comparison because where's the fucking logic? You fucking retards. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, just, it just doesn't make... And again, like, I can... I can enter the mind and go, okay, like I, yeah. I disagree that orcs are black people, but I, I mean, I guess I can see their arguments. Yeah. But yeah. I, I can't get there with Tyranid. Like, there's nowhere where I can get with Tyranid that makes no. sense to me. No. 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 It's such a novel take, though. It is genuinely novel. Like, I've never seen a take like that. 500,000 views on that tweet now. Wow. And this is going genuinely viral in the Warhammer community. Everyone's like, what? <laughs> uh, psycho I something. Harry Potter, you know? hmm? I get the Harry Potter complaint, you know, like the little hook nose bank running types. It's like, yeah, they're the goblins. Or like yeah. Watto. Uh, that from... kind of, <laughs> yeah. That's what goblins are, though. I mean, look wise, sure. I'm talking about. Sure, sure. But I can understand why there are people taking offense. You know what I mean? Uh, especially as there was a Star of David in the floor of the bank in one of the Harry Potters. Uh, so does it, like, it, there was a star? Well, no, there was actually a Star of David, but the thing is it was actually filmed in a real bank. Oh, so. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that makes it even no! funnier! <laughs> I know! I know. The like, a bunch of people were getting really offended by it. Dude, <laughs> a bunch of people were getting really offended. Look, now the real the bank they got no problem with. However, okay. Um... Psycho Sumpty with a twenty dollar. Glad to see you're not streaming video games for once. As I love yeah. a passive aggressive tweet for twenty dollars. <laughs> uh, also, use code Nose at Field of Greens. That's right, fieldofgreens.com. Promo code Nose. Get yourself one serving of fruit and vegetables per day uh, in Ooh. one simple drink. You drink two a day, you get two servings of each, and reap those health benefits, baby. Well, I, I think it'd be rotten by the time it got to me, but okay. No, no, no. It's it's powdered. Oh, okay. And it's just ground up fruits and vegetables. They're a sponsor of my show. They're cool. I drink nice. I drink one every show. All right, Rumble it's Boy. About, yeah. Uh, Lord Metal t uh, Metal Man with a five pounds says, "Welcome, gents, to the Twitter Warhammer community. Bad takes have ruled here for the last three years with Woke Hammer. Now Chud Hammer rises to mock them." <laughs> well, I was gonna ah no, I was gonna actually say there's um there, there yeah there is. Uh, a Twitter account called Woke Hammer Ls. Uh, it's only got 3,600 uh, followers. I discovered it today. And man, I was on the toilet for about 15 minutes just scrolling his feed, <laughs> enjoying it. Like it, it's it's some good stuff. Go and go and give uh, the the chud some support over there, dude. Those th some of those L accounts are so like the stuff they I find know. is I know unbelievable. And I know it's just people sending like the entire internet yeah. sending them stuff that's why they get so popular yeah. but it's unbelievable what people unironically post and you're just like how did you get to this how who, who touched you and where and why yeah yes yeah so great isn't it <laughs> more like where didn't somebody touch you because they wow. should you know. uh yeah ah! have you guys um have you guys seen the uh, YouTube channel Warrior Tier? They do the uh, narrative. They they used to do just lore vi videos on Warhammer, but now they do the narrated stories. No, no, I haven't seen that. Oh my god, they're they're voice acted. The best one that I've listened to so far is an Ogren's Tale, oh, and it's yeah. a it's a first person narrative of an Ogren from I think either he's from Cadia or his whole unit's Cadians. It's after the world broke, and it's like the saddest, most morose thing. Oh. But it's also completely endearing yeah. because it's an ogre, and he has no concept of yeah. like any of the greater implications. Like he's like, "I like Fez. He stopped coming around though." I may oh. said, and it's like, "Aw, <laughs> there, oh. there, that channel is uh, dead. Is phenomenal, phenomenal." Oh. Uh, and not Maman with a five dollar says introduce my dad to the podcast of the Lotus Eaters yesterday. He liked it. Hey. He might have a new subscriber pretty soon. That's it. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. It was nice doing my uh, thing with Bo. That was really good fun. Yeah. And, yeah uh, everything, good... Everything's going surprisingly well, man. Like you know, everyone everyone seems well, to be happy. Apart from demonetization. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but, but like that's that's um. It was expected, frankly. You know, the YouTube would eventually be like, "Hang on a second, I hate you, and I want you dead." Uh, so we we kind oh, of yeah. had that 
coming and we knew that was going to happen so it wasn't destructive right it wasn't going to end us but like outside of that like everything seems to be going really really well like you know everyone seems to be very happy and productive and doing an incredible work uh, incredible just job on the content we produce and it's just like i don't have any complaints about a single person they're all brilliant and it's like oh, i'm so fucking lucky man it's so a awesome. good podcast it's a very interesting podcast thanks man and all, all this all the premium stuff we do is just amazing i can't get over how good these guys are uh like, Dyke Inks with the two pounds says, gosh, I've missed this. Much love to you all. Thank you, Dai. Thank you. Paul Kerr with the 10 pounds says, uh, three of my favorite people on the internet and doing hobby to boot. Good times. Watching while working on my kit bash death watch. Watch master. Happy hobby, guy. Ooh. Okay. Nice. Um, Paul, let's go through a couple of uh Memberships, the Red Ranger has been a source for months. As as did he hear that the CEO of IKEA got elected as the Prime Minister of Sweden? Heard the first thing he'll do is start to assemble his cabinet. Go, oh, I, I, I fucking know where you live, right? I fucking know where you live. <laughs> I hate dad jokes. I hate dad jokes. Super chats so much. The only I dad jokes that are acceptable are the ones we tell, right? Yeah, like, but, they're the but only when, acceptable dad jokes. But man, when someone drops one in the in a super chat, I'm like, you piece of you, shit. Yeah, you I do it on paper, like fucking dare you. I'll have all your details. I'll fuck you. Paul Turner I, with a uh 15 month Witcher membership says, uh, hey as love today's video. I can tell it was a lot more structured than your usual off the cuff videos. Started it today, finished it today. Uh Bree seems to be a toxic mix of becoming famous too fast and being a vapid Cali girl. Uh, there's, there's, there's lots of, as we saw in the video, there's a few, quite a few moving pieces there, actually. Well, I, I didn't see the video, but like, mm. I feel like it's the people that are around her that make her yeah. the, the way she is, right? That's my, that was my, my big thing. Yeah. Right. yeah, my take yeah, was yeah, the, yeah, with yeah. Her, her surrounding teams, yeah. Because I've, I've seen her like trying to explain herself and I'm just like, right, you just don't understand. You know, you, you just are like insulated from other people mattering you know and it's like you know it's weird and sad i wish i was a vapid valley girl God, God, oh, so do I. life on easy mode man holy fuck Dude, oh. i just it, it is it's so insane yeah. when you when you actually see it play out and it's like yeah. man if i were a single hot chick i would be so rich it would be it'd be unfathomable yeah, I'd be Belle Delphine, man i'd be living in a fucking mansion oh, all I it takes all it takes is a board. What what I, what I like about Belle Delphine, right? You know, like is that she's obviously got just a bit of understanding, and she's got a sense of humor, and so it's just like, well, if I just do these funny things, then everyone will really like me, and I'll make loads of fucking money. And she did, and it's like, okay, well, I don't even, I'm not even angry, you know, I'm not even mad. Yeah, no, I I didn't, I think, I think Belle made one mistake. I think she, I think she accelerated into porn too fast and too mm. hard. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. and porn now. She yeah. did. That was uh, it was like Christmas two years ago or something. She like released an actual pornographic oh, video because she'd been non nude forever. That was the funny thing. She was yeah. so successful while just being uh, cutesy and 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 attractive. And but yeah, full tease. And then she like she did porn and then she like went into hardcore stuff really fast. I'm like, girl, you should have milked this for like years, yeah. in my yeah. opinion. Um, remember but, Lucy Pinder. Yep, in the nineties, I I do. There was a and magazine Lucy Pinder called... just she just wouldn't get her tits out, but she had amazing tits. You could They're tell, huge. and we were just desperate. And the day that it was announced that Lucy Pinder was going to get tits out, and Loaded was it Loaded magazine or Nuts or something this, like that? This does ring bells. Hang on a second. I don't, I don't and, remember. And... I just remember her. She was in a magazine called American Curves, which is weird because Lucy Pinder was, I think, English, right? Yes, yeah, she's English. Yeah, but she was in American Curves. Uh, but yeah, oh, but which was non nude, so I don't know which nude. Yeah, because she, she just she would just do bras, you know, br bikinis, right. bras, and then and then it was announced Lucy Pinder is going to do her first topless shoot. Fuck it, men were we were, I mean, we're talking university days, they were cute, 
They were fucking. Th- this is before of internet WXP. porn, really. Yeah, this is well, yeah, well, yeah, sort of. Can't you? You could have internet porn, but you'd, you'd be on fifty-six k modem. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I think does this mirror it's not like it's, it's nothing like now. Here we go. <laughs> no, let me, no. For the audience, because I know the audience may not know who Lucy Pinder is. I'm gonna pull up a tasteful image of her. Okay. Like one that's one that's safe for YouTube. One that's not safe for YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. oh no! If we could one's... just have one monetized channel between us, guys, that would be great. Okay. The problem is her outfits are, all have enough, like like a little hint of nipple show. Here we go. Uh, just a second. Um, that one's blurry. By the way, Lucy, if you're watching the stream, you probably are. So is Henry Cavill. Shout out to Henry. Um, come on, Henry. Where else is Henry Cavill going to be on a Thursday evening? Of course, he's, he's watching this. Henry, if you want to come on, paint some Warhammer with us. I'll actually go to the storage and pull out some Horace I'll, Harris. I'll give you some painting tips, bro. Mm-hmm. Henry, good first you know, he'll, give you, he'll give you some painting tips, mate. Uh, As, I saw it in instance, it's a good first effort, but there are de- there's definitely room for improvement. But I could give him some good constructive criticism. As just admitted, Henry, that you're the only man who could get him to pull out. So, yeah. You know, <laughs> you don't want to pull out, man. Come on, man. Here we However, go. I will destroy your custodies. So, no. You can't. Challenge, like, like, go on internet. Make sure that that challenge is well known. Sargon of there we go. challenges. Oh, Henry my God. Cavill, it's yeah, okay, been, I, can... I reckon it's probably been two decades since my eyes have seen Lucy Pinder. No, well, this was, yeah, this was her 2014 calendar here. So, really? I mean, this picture's not Wow, years she's old. looking fucking great. Yeah. But no, I mean, she was <laughs> stunning. Stunning. Yeah. Woman. Still is, probably. Okay, gentlemen, mm. can you help me out with this? Mm hmm. I, I feel like there's starting to be a, a little bit of a backlash on the right against women looking like Lucy Pinder and wearing bikinis and stuff like that. It's getting fucking weird to me. Um, so. Yeah, well, Lucy's just got to go fucking to Dunkin' Donuts and get fat, right? Did, well, you, see the, talking... did you see the Dove commercial? The Dove commercial? The, 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 oh, yeah, the, yeah, I did. The Dove yeah. propaganda, yeah. 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 I don't watch the the last time I saw a Dove commercial. Everyone was three hundred and fifty pounds, so I stopped oh, watching. Well, it hasn't, the good news is Nick hasn't changed. Oh, <laughs> consistency. The is tradition okay. persists. <laughs> but this time it's roping video games into it. You see, you're not allowed to have a fantasy character. The irony is, of course, that whenever somebody buys something like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy fourteen, some MMORPG, they make the most fantasy of fantasy characters they can. Whether it's a female or male. Has, I make the fattest character I can. <laughs> okay, just there's a couple principle. of people. There is a couple of people that do that. All right. <laughs> no, I'm joking, uh, but I'm but uh, most of them most of them do do you know the most fantasy of fantasy. Yeah. Dove teamed up with I think it was was it Epic oh, Games or Rare or something some game company, uh, and uh, and they had this like really attractive game character, but then. She went into the changing room. She took off a corset and she just. Oh, and she took off her helmet and her face just went. Boom, and then she was just, you know. You can't you can't have a fantasy uh, outlook anymore on your fantasy. You must be representative of who you are right now. God, As I said, donuts. I can literally just walk outside and see exactly this. I don't need it on my television. Yeah, I can exactly. like I can look in the mirror and see someone without muscles. Like I just yeah. want when yeah. I when I look at my hero yeah. wielding a two handed hammer, unless I'm being ironic on stream, I want him to be a giant muscle bound <laughs> monster who's crushing yeah. enemies without any, uh, yeah. without any care of physical exertion because it's, it's so not too much easy. to ask. <laughs> like yeah. what? Why? Why does it? Ha- why are they like this? I don't understand. I don't want me in a video game. I, I want. Know. I, I want Henry Cavill or Chris yes. Evans in a video game. Right. When yeah. I'm playing a video game, I don't want me in it. You know, like you're not yeah. even just watching it or in a film or abstractly. When I'm playing the game, I don't want it to be a fat, schlubby neckbeard, right? Yeah. I, I I want to be the giant Viking warrior. You know, yes. I want to be. You know, I know what so happens. Awesome. I know what happens when I swing an axe twice. Like yeah. I need to go to the hospital and I need to have a ventilator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Move over, son. Then he needs to sit down. Oh, you know? Come on. Like, stop doing this, please. I, I'm never going to have the experience of the epic hero because I'm a regular dad. Is that okay? You know, can I please have the small sniff of a close experience of epic heroism? It's like imagine if 
every racing game required you to drive a Buick. Like you just have in the speed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sorry. Yeah, you're you in don't... a thirty zone now. I'm afraid. Well, I bought I bought Forza Seven. I was hoping to drive a Lamborghini. Well, sorry, only only point zero zero one percent of Forza buyers get to drive a Lamborghini, and it's only if they've uh, if they've done the you know pay to play of a million dollars. It's like oh well, yeah. But we, we we need to be reflective of reality here. So well, sorry. sorry, can I can I just give you an update on the uh, Tyranid question? Yeah, yes. sure. People have been raising the point that hang on, okay, so if uh, Tyranids represent Jews and Jews which, are which white, don't. then that makes Tyranids a part of the white race. So Tyranids are officially white in the Warhammer universe. Thank God. <laughs> we need we needed the help. <laughs> That was that was a little bit too quick. Though. But just how is you know through transitive properties, the Tyranids are now the white people upholding white supremacy. Like, oh. that's well, they are, quick. They are colonizers, kind yeah, of. Yeah, they are. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, if he had said Tyranids represent Europeans, I could definitely see the argument. Right? It's like this giant conquering culture that absorbs other cultures. Okay, fine. I can I can accept that. Uh, analogy you know but ah oh. anyway uh, wait I'm so does that make the sisters mm -hmm. of battle nazis since oh, they yeah. burn the team now nick now nick no oh, yeah. that's not fair because no, no. now now they're even more attractive <laughs> literally <laughs> the, the set, that was only the first half of the tweet right the tyranids of the race of dogs <laughs> oh, no. that's why they love the imperium right because the imperium of the nazis killing the tyranids Ah, 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 okay. Yes, see, it's all coming together now. Wait, yeah. uh, okay, moving on. Uh, <laughs> die dicks. Moving on from the very that one. Place. That one just dropped. Okay. Uh, die dicks gifted a membership to the stream. Thank you, die. Best name I can think of gifted five memberships to the stream. Thank you so much indeed. Ian Soforth gifted 10 memberships to the stream. Thank you, Ian, so much, dude. Dang, MCU awesome. fan Sloppy Mother, <laughs> who apparently is a fucking... Is that you? Is that a mod? What? How is that a mod? I can't imagine having a fucking... Who are you? Channel. Are you mod? MCU Sloppy Mother? Who, who is that? Anyway, uh, they gifted 10 memberships to the stream. Um, George! <laughs> gifted 20 two lots of 10 memberships to the stream i'm just checking george it says it says it twice at the top i just i'm just checking dude um probably because it's george yes so george with 20 memberships so george thank you very much indeed dude thank you very much who's who the Fucking Elnor is Man United sloppy. What? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, but they've got a, a wrench by the name, so whatever. Okay. Might might be Will. I don't know. You, you Someone hacked into your mod hood and then gifted a bunch of memberships. Yeah, so. I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, LJK with a $20 super sticker. Thank you. Uh, toxic monger of the hateful brood with five dollars is man. I thought y'all playing Starship Troopers extermination, but this is a pleasant surprise. Hi, Rags. Hey. Uh, DB with a two pounds says knock one out. It's much easier. Screw dating. Uh, it's safer. I'll give you that. He it's is not, right. It is way easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's it's all it's not the same. Though. I know. I know. I know. Look, I mean, come on. Um, Justin Parrish with a two dollars says Nick needs to write his book as Nick R R, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, Grifty with the five dollars says love these streams. What's up with Racket and as Sargon? You should be on the L E more. Miss that sultry voice. Also, bring back twists, please. Bring, bring back what? Oh, this Twist. week is stupid. Um, oh, this well, the, 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 oh, yeah. the pop is basically this day is stupid, you know? So. It's all stupid now. Every day's right. stupid. Every, everything's just fucked, man. 
every every second of all, all of civilization at this point is just fucked, and so it's just so rocky. It it's weird because it encourages me in in a way to just kind of check out of everything, yeah. and that's not good, but it's also really fucking relaxing. Just coasting along, sure, on a sinking ship. <laughs> well, like it's like, well, how am I gonna stop it? So instead, yeah. it's like, well, I just you know, I'll laugh and and smile and tell jokes, and people are always like, well, what do we do? I'm like, well, what do you do? <laughs> what do you yeah, do? What can against, you do? You can talk about tyranny, but like, at, and at some point, there's a theoretical revolution, and I don't want it because it's horrifying. Yeah. Uh, and, and I know there's, uh, I talked about this last night a little bit. I know there's a lot of like revolution fantasies and civil war mm -hmm. fantasies that people have. And I think they're all very rosy and very, yes. uh, uh, they, well, they all, they all begin with the premise that I won't be one of the people getting shot. And it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and let's change that. You will get shot. Now what that, How do you feel about it? That's what I was thinking is, um, well, for me, I was like, I have kids, man. I don't want them to yeah. go through, like, I don't want them to go through that. I think it's, yeah. it's much easier to be, uh, a revolutionary in the province of, of a person without, um, offspring yeah. that they're responsible for. But I said, you know, uh, uh, for everybody out there with like the, I've got my guns and I'm off grid and everything. It's like, well, but what if you're the first guy, like you don't know the revolution is happening and someone comes up and takes your grid and takes your children and takes your wife and takes your house and takes your life. Like then all the guns and all the planning was nothing for you. And the glorious revolution is not glorious. And the, the scary thing is, is that's kind of how it happens. And it, it reminded me of that moment in the uh, Chaz, if you remember during the, the yeah, Chaz, yeah, yeah. where oh. they, they, they found that one Trump supporter and they're like, there he is. And the guy just walks up behind him and just pops him in the head. The guy's walking down the street and it was like, that's it. They saw that guy at a rally somewhere and he got killed. That's what it looks like yeah. in a modern civil war. It doesn't look like uh 1765 or 1865 United States with battle lines and, and with clear, uh clear state divisions. Cause that's not what a modern civil war is going to be. The, the other side aren't wearing uniforms, right? Right. It'll be, a, it'll be an insurrection. Well, they are, they, they got neighbor. FBI on them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, they're, they're not they're not like you know it's not one side wears blue uniforms one side wears red uniforms and then we line up and shoot each other yeah that's you're not how it's gonna happen you're not gonna march 100 miles to the next battle it's going to no. be the guy down the road <laughs> shows up at your house while you're asleep miles, that's why yeah exactly no but that's exactly we, it, Nick. the guy down the road shows up at your house while you're asleep Yep, and uh, well, maybe we should have the old Civil War though, and have all the Dove models become soldiers so they can march off the way. Sure, sure. <laughs> like any no. anything's got to be better than the hell we're living through, to be honest. It's uh, but it's he says it's, painting his Warhammer model in perfect safety and peace. Yeah, that's yes. that's the thing I I keep going back to. I'm like, yeah. you know what? I I know it's bad. And I know like our rights get trampled and stuff. But at the same time, we're all really fucking comfortable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're, I've gone hungry for a few days, then I'll storm the Bastille. You're watching mm -hmm. dumbasses on the internet talk right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's yeah. a pretty cool world in a, in a weird <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah. We're complaining while building 120 pound Lego sets and, yeah. you know, whatever. And, uh, yeah, at the moment, it's still all theoretical. But to be honest with you, I am worried that it is going to get very untheoretical quite soon. I'm absolutely terrified of it. Like I said, yeah. uh, I I do not want my kids to live in a land of war yeah. and turmoil. I don't yeah. I don't want them to have to go through that. I mean, yeah. it, were I a single twenty year old man again, you yeah. know, it, it's a whole different perspective. But now it's like, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't want them to be uh, suffering for food. I don't want them to be constantly on the move. I don't want them to be afraid every time they look over their shoulder. I live I out in the country. I don't want to murder my neighbor in his sleep. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get too hasty. Some neighbors. All I'm saying is, someone's getting murdered in their sleep. It's not going to stick in me. You know <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, and uh, yeah, I think I think there is lessons in some of the in some of the really well done post apocalyptic movies or disco dystopian movies. The Book of Eli is a great one. That's not a place you want to live. It's horrific. Yeah, I'm mad. No, that that's pretty yeah, cool. I, All those cars. Yeah, I do are actually. Awesome. Fancy. If, if we can make Mad Max happen, I'm down for it. Fury Road was a fun fucking movie. I I really enjoyed it. If, I know some it people. Had any right to be honest. What was that? Fury Road is better than it had any right to be. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it should have. It should have shit by all rights, but actually, 
I did enjoy it. It was just, it's like fun and loud and exciting. It's like, this is pure spectacle as it should. The one truck was just a guy chained to it in the most metal Warhammer looking thing I've ever yeah. seen, playing an electric guitar with fire pipes everywhere. I'm like, this is awesome. Like no, that car has no so purpose. Was literally the hero of the movie and did nothing wrong. And you can't change my mind. Who? Wait, who is that? Morton Joe is his name. The, the the leader of the oh movie. yeah yeah mediocre yeah that guy was awesome <laughs> he wanted like his women he, he had his women he controlled his uh his border yeah. yeah exactly controlled the border he had water supplies resources were sorted everyone was prospering don't know what the problem was <laughs> what are we revolting against <laughs> here? I don't know if everyone was uh you know prospering everyone, everyone that mattered, mattered was, was prospering <laughs> everyone <who> mattered <laughs> there you go. That's the, the disclaimer I was looking for. Yeah, the, the the main problem I had with the movie was like the resolution was they just opened the water gates forever, and yeah. I'm like, but you're gonna run out now. Yeah, retards. Like, like literally, yeah, retards. you're going it's to like the, uh, the women <laughs> washing themselves on the truck. It's like, what are you doing? You live in a waterless wasteland, and you're just pouring it onto the floor. What are you doing? Like, ER did such a good video of that. But see, I while I was watching the movie, I didn't care about any of that because, nice. like, the, the cars were awesome. The action mm. was fun. The the sound design was really well done. The mm. acting was was passably good. Like, it wasn't bad. It was fine. And, uh, and it Tom was Hardy just, was pretty good. Yeah. But, but when, when he was in it, it was barely in the fucking thing. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When he was in it, obviously. But it's like everything was... Everything mm. was acceptable and fun. Mm. And I, I mm. can deal with a movie like that. And like, I can overlook a bunch of the like little, like I can overlook plot issues when I know that the movie is not so serious. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. And the, 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 like, like you were saying, like I didn't feel like I was being attacked by the movie. I felt that the movie was trying to enjoy itself. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's good. That's all I want. It's not so much to ask. No, it's really simple. That's why Top Gun Maverick was so damn popular. It doesn't no, attack anybody. anybody. Oh, that new that new Mission Impossible trailer could drop today. That looks so good. But isn't Tom Cruise getting like too fucking old? He looks no, great. He 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 looks yeah, he looks really good in the movie. In yeah. uh Top Gun, he does great. Um mm, okay. Top Gun's really I Top Gun to me was the sequel. I was like, this is a sequel nobody's asked for. You know, it's mm. 35 mm. years or whatever since Top Gun. Who the f mm. this is gonna be God, and then I watched it. I was like, "Fucking hell, this is amazing! This is so good." Really? I, I still haven't watched it. I'll have to watch it because Top Gun One is just—it's just gay red porn. Meat. It's just yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just gay porn. It's the reddest of meat. It was done per like it's like, what do you want from Top Gun? Well, you know, uh, planes. <laughs> we want planes yeah. to fly around shooting uh, shit. Fast planes, uh, fast bikes, uh, fast cars, fast people, and then one. Extremely gay volleyball scene with Kenny. <laughs> yeah, the with gayest of gays. Kenny Loggins' song about just needing to get off work so you can go hang with the boys. Hang with the <laughs> boys. <laughs> I don't know how that can be perceived as gay. I don't know. But, but yet, I don't They're care. They're only shirtless and slapping each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, look. If you guys that. have not had a little slap tittery with the boys on the beach, I don't know. Who, I don't know. I don't even know you anymore. Yeah, I've seen a million Vice articles about this. If you're not cuddling and having sex with your bros, then what do you oh yeah, doing? yeah, pretty, yeah. Apparently, oh, you, can, you, you can have uh, male friends and kiss them and cuddle them yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the non-gay bromance thing was so. I didn't read the article. I just saw the headline and the the yeah. picture, and I was like, what the. Is it was a picture on? like the, a cartoon of two dudes on the sofa or something cuddling. Yeah, yeah. why? Yes. Why are straight men having gay sex? It's like because they're not straight. Is the gay? <laughs> is this why Vice is going bankrupt? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fuck, man. Oh, Fucking... I'm so upset about that. Salutes in the chats, everyone. Jesus, fuck Vice. Our fucking time. Everybody in the chat has to go ahead and do what the founder of Vice did and get your dick out. And also, Buzz, did, Buzzfeed going, you know, gone. Buzzfeed yeah, News gone. Buzzfeed gone. Fucking Vice, Vice gone. gone. Who's next? Oh, Daily Ghost, Beast. Yeah. You sweating it? How am I gonna get my? How am I gonna get my news without them? Yeah, I know. This is my career. It's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's actually. Yeah. Can we not? Can we not be too hasty about the rest of them now, please? Come. Uh, yeah. The the next one to go is actually podcast of the Lotus Eaters. Going well. No, our job yeah, is yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Our job is done. <laughs> <laughs> They're all gone. <laughs> It turns out we won. So, uh, <laughs> doodle pip. 
Cheers, lads. <laughs> We're uh, out. <laughs> to be honest with you, I could probably live with that. I could probably, uh, you know, move into some other genre. It would probably be nice, actually, to win. <laughs> Wow, there's, there's the some West days Man. I just want to stream video games and never stop. Yeah. Dude, there, never there's... stop. Oh, I said that a long time a long time ago. I was talking to my friend when I my channel was really s still small, but I was I was starting to make money and, and grow and stuff like that. I was like, man, if I could just make like five grand a month on Twitch playing video games, yeah. I don't know why I would do any other job on the planet. Yeah. Like mm. I, I I've never figured out how to translate playing video because i'm not good enough at them yeah and and while i'm playing them i don't uh it, it's hard for me to stream in the way i do so it's like i've never figured out how to do that but it's like man if i could just be one of these guys that makes so much money just playing video games all day what a fucking life how yeah how Talk could you how do they do it um, yeah why does he, he still get make a fortune from twitch didn't he get there's, deplatformed? yeah, yeah. There's no, I don't think there's ever been a definitive statement on why. Right. Um, so I've, I've never seen him. I didn't know who he was or anything. But like, it's just like, hey, this video game streamer got taken down. It's like, he, why? Threat he threatened yeah. him with legal ap action and then never, nothing ever came of it. And it's right. like, dude, oh, no, they, they, they settled out of court, I believe. Oh, oh did they? they? I okay. think so. I think so. I think it was settled out of court. But why? What, like, if he just streams video games all day, why the fuck would they take him down? There was a uh, rumor. Because, there yeah, was a rumor it. of a Me Too type situation. Oh, no, 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 it, no, what, no, no. That was uh, the dude that said that Slayer, whatever he's called, uh, is full. He was full of shit. Okay, See, okay. He, he I, I don't know anything just, about uh, this Doctor Disrespect guy, right? But I'm guessing, right, that yeah. because he's got this person, Doctor Disrespect, I bet he's a total fucking decent gentleman or something. You know, I bet there's nothing about that. I mean, I'm probably wrong, obviously. But like, well, his his persona. So, Doctor Disrespect is a character that he created. Yeah. yeah. And his videos were actually like really high production, and um, with the. He he has like a mullet and these sunglasses, and he's yeah. also pretty damn good at first person shooters. And so he he do well, it. He used to make COD maps. That's what he did for a and living. So, oh, okay. So there. So yeah. So he used to make Call of Duty maps. But then, so he's he's good at first person shooters, and he would kill people. And he'd also be like a 90, 80s to like mid eighties to early nineties asshole. Right <laughs> on stream, like that was that's the bit. Yeah. That's the character. Right, right, right. Like I'm so good. I'm so cool. And uh, and 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 that's it. But that was clearly a character yeah. uh, that he played, and I don't think anybody was under the illusion that, that was him. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and he's shit talking people he killed in Call of Duty. I mean, like, come on. Oh yeah. Well, well he yeah, recently come got on. Who cares? Activision recently uh, banned him for a week for uh, <laughs> okay. shit talking somebody. Um. The the rumor is uh, that um. Uh, you know when Microsoft streaming platform, what was it called again? I keep forgetting. Uh, one that, one that, Mixer. That Mixer. Mixer. When when Mixer was around, and Mixer were were uh, stealing uh, the Twitter streamers like Ninja and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Doctor Disrespect might have received an offer from Mixer, or might have implied that he had an offer from Mixer to Twitch. Mm -hmm. So they offered him a bigger contract to stay on Twitch. Right. And then when Mixer, the whole thing with Mixer fell through, they basically deplatformed him to get out of the contract. Yeah, they would. They, that was the idea that they had some pretextual reason, but the real thing was we don't have to compete. And we've yes. promised you somewhere between 10 and $30 million. Dude, you know who's, who won the biggest in all of that? Ninja. Ninja. Smartest motherfucker on the planet. He takes like a $30 million deal from Microsoft. Mixer folds. Microsoft still has to pay out. Like, uh -huh. like because <laughs> just because Mixer folds, it's like, well, we're not going to keep this going. But you still owe Ninja $30 million and you're Microsoft. You have the money. Yeah. And then he just reopens his Twitch and it's huge and he gets all of it. Oh, God, yeah. what a brilliant yeah. move. Yeah. Oh, good for him. Good for there him. There's some there's some stream uh this is uh several months ago. I remember headlines like Ninja loses two hundred and twenty thousand dollars gambling on live stream. And I was like, he doesn't even care. Like yeah, that's that's pocket change to him. 
It's, it's oh god, it's so much money. It's unreal. Oh god, why did we get into politics? Fucking what is this? I know. Like god, could I just could well, I just guide my hair to move blue? back into gaming at any time? I'm prepared, you know, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm I'm just looking for a tit job because I'm gonna do it that way. That's what I'm gonna oh, do. Oh nice. I'm gonna get nice. A, a big massive pair of jubblies and I'm gonna get on hot stream with a low yeah. cut top yeah. Yeah. in nice. the hot tub, do yeah. the dance, play Let's Dance TV. I'm all already the time. tipping you, dude. I'm already tipping you. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it tingle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but which hole oh my god. It's gone there. Uh but yeah, I mean it looks like not to disrespect, um, you know, going to YouTube was a massive downgrade. In terms of right, right. What yeah, he was I mean, getting, what he was getting at Twitch. Well, the Twitch audience is is for that, and the the U YouTube is trying to do gaming, but they don't do it. No. As good as YouTube is at an, as an, at incentivizing participation from the audience and stuff like that. They've got nothing on how Twitch does it with video game streams. And it's weird because Twitch takes a much bigger cut, but it doesn't matter. Mm. Um, they have they have gamified, uh, they've gamified the um act of giving money so well, and they've done it in a way that appeals to their core demographic, which is still, I believe, the average, the average age of a Twitch viewer is 19. Wow. Ooh. It may have gone up to like 21 by now. But that's the fuck basically 19 year olds got money to give away Twitch. It's so cheap, man. Like, think about it. So you got your you're in school. You got your Amazon Prime free student account. So you get a free Twitch right. subscription. So you get to give whatever streamer you want at least one thing. Everything right. else, it's it's a five dollar subscription. And and it's just it's a numbers game. These guys on right. Twitch, Asmongold streaming oh. to 30,000 people all the time. Oh, wow. They're at not. Least. There are not that many YouTubers that do live streams that big in the United mm. States, uh, mm. and certainly not in the video game space. And when they do, you know, the uh, the YouTube monetization system is primarily super chats, whereas Twitch's is primarily the memberships. So you develop this recurring monthly base that gets to be tens of thousands of people big. It's it's a brilliant way to do, and it's mm. and it's not very cost uh, intensive. Plus the gifting of memberships, which YouTube copied is so big on Twitch and the culture around gifting it means that you're, you're going to keep getting these massive numbers right. and it's, it's kind of low cost of entry, but the participation with, uh, with emojis and, and all of mm. the extra plugins that you can do in Twitch chat, when you know, know how to do it and invest in it, it, it just creates a system that is more conducive to mm. live streaming than YouTube's. In my mm. opinion, that's my analysis. Mm. No, no, Speak, it sounds speaking like Speaking of uh, gifted uh, subs, uh, MCU fan Sloppy Mother, who I still can't work out who the fuck you are, uh, <laughs> just gifted 20 memberships to the stream. Oh. So there you go. Thank you. That's a great segue, Nick. They Thank up, you. They up to 60 now? Or just 40? Because I think they did 20 they're earlier. Up to, they're, up to four, they're up to... I think they're up to uh, 30 or 40. Oh, damn. Awesome. Yeah. Which is uh, huge. Which is uh, huge, huge. How huge? I think, is we, that? I think anyway, it's it's the huge. I've got a cat, by the way, here now, who's on, who's now on camera as well, who's on the other camera. <laughs> He's like, "What are you doing over here? Let me just step on that." Yeah, let me just step on over your Legos and drop loads of hair so it gets in between the Lego pieces. So when you put down a Lego piece, it's got a hair trapped in it. Dude, oh, MCU dude. is dropping dropping twenty more, man. What? Shit, what? Shit. Movies? M no, MCU, MCU fans, no. Sloppy Mother oh. just dropped another 20 oh, memberships. Right. MCU fans, Sloppy Mother just gifted another 20 men. Fucking hell. At this rate, the entire chat bashy is going washy. to be members. Bashy washy? Gotta be bashy washy. It's fucking Dr. Dis... No, it's Ninja. <laughs> if that's Ninja or Dr. Dis... Twitch money in. Stop being so fucking tight. <laughs> yeah, <Dr. laughs> Henry Cavill spending his Superman money on Who? it. Gotta be bashy washy. Come on, man. Come on, man. Dude, thank you. That is insane amounts. Uh, thank you. I really do appreciate that. Um, let me go through a couple of these. Best name I can think of, which has been on the screen for about 25 minutes. With a $5, says, I had a blind date. Never again. I learned about the evils of man. 
I asked if she hated men. Why? She oh, if she hated men so much, why date one? She suddenly had a headache. Should have told her you have the cure for a headache. Whoa. A that's rape. You can't do that. Dropped a psychology today article about how sex cures headaches. That, that's rape. That's great. Yeah. Lads never try that on your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. Not, not if you ever want to have sex again. No, baby girl, I can fix that. No, you nope. Can't. You go fucking <laughs> near me, and I will. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Look, it was How about a cup of tea. It was a valiant effort. It was. <laughs> uh, Twilight from Bashy Washy. Thank you. I'm tr thank you. Uh, but Twilight Dragon Three with a 25 Canadian. Thank you. I knew this guy that grew up in his 70s and he always told me stories how he was such a lady killer and that women weren't so woke. I kept reminding him that he can't get away with that current day. He kept getting me too. I don't know. If you meet a woke woman in a nightclub and she gets pissed, she will, she'll be wetter than an otter's pocket if you tell her to fuck off. They do love misogyny, don't they? They do. They absolutely yeah. love it. They love it when when the man is just like, you can't say that to a woman. Fuck off. I can. And yeah. I did. I just did. Yeah. Gosh. The all of feminism is just a shit test that civilization failed. Because so. <laughs> like, really, what they were expecting us to do is say no, get back in the kitchen, and they didn't, and we didn't, and uh, and so now look at the the havoc that they're wreaking on us. Yeah, <laughs> they, they 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 would just want they just wanted us to say no, so they knew that the, the strong men would be in charge. I'm telling you, man. Do you know I, who I, else? Cal legitimately, told you to think just you might no? be right. No, I, I honestly, Nick, I honestly think I am right. Yeah, literally, if men are just collecting, like we don't take advice from women or orders from women, what are you talking about? They'd be like, oh, okay, then. But what would they have done? Revolted? No, they would have done nothing. Yep. Anyway, we sorry, failed. What you I, I just said, uh, do you know who else told you? Just say no. Sorry, I can't hear you, man. Right. He said, you know who else told you to just say no? Do you know who else told you to just say no? Uh, oh, man. What? Range Hill? Yeah, I don't know. What? what? Uh, they did the song, Just Say No, for dr dr drug song. Oh, oh, what? One of these fucking terrible Christian anti-drug things from the 70s or whatever. No, it's Grange yeah. Hill was the school. It's the school show oh, on, right. on BBC. You know what? I and, never and watched Grange Hill. Didn't you? I fucking hated Grange Hill. I fucking hated Grange Hill. It was just in my so in my era, it was amazing. Oh no no I no no I, like every everyone I knew liked it. I just really couldn't stand it. it. There was something about it that just really wound me up, and I was just like, no no no. I'll go play outside like a normal person. That's right, when... Well, the thing is though, they, they they it was this whole whole anti drug song. Just say no, and then America were like, hey, come over to America. And uh, do a tour around America, do, you know, doing your anti-drug. Don't say no, kids in school stuff. Don't say no. So they went. So they, so they went. Okay. So they get shipped. These kids get shipped across to America to do this anti-drug campaign, and they're saying all we were fucking doing in America was, was drugs. drugs. Yeah, that's all we were doing. We Dude, were what a, high off a of fucking tits all the time. What a dream job that would have been. So they said oh, we're high is. as a fucking kite. Going around to these schools, talking about just say no and stuff, and they said we're just getting getting fed fucking drugs all the time. So the uh, that's been one of the weirdest red pills of my like last couple years of just um, talking to uh, talking. Uh, so I I go to like um, I go to a bunch of charity events. I go to uh, art stuff uh, like art shows and stuff like that with this with my non YouTube social club. Uh -huh. And um, I feel like you're uh, lying to us here, Nick. No, no, like, uh, <laughs> <this game. laughs> I, I, I have a social life, yeah, yeah, sure. see all yeah, the yeah, yeah, paintings wow. behind me. Like, I, I go to these I, things, I, I buy art, <laughs> and no, but my wife and I love to go because we like we like to have a reason to dress up, yeah, right. And so, we go, we like, I'll buy a new suit, uh, she'll buy a new dress, we'll go out, we'll get, we'll get dressed up, and we'll go. We go to like a couple events a year, and um, and in talking to adults there who are my age and older and realizing just how propagandized drugs have been my whole life where you where you see these people who are objectively successful uh they're fine they're well adjusted completely normal and they're like 
well, yeah, I, I did ketamine for like 25 years. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and they, they'll, they'll tell you about like, you just get into a casual conversation. They'll tell you about all their exp uh, experiences and stuff. And you're like, by everything I learned from the Reagans, you should be dead. Mm -hmm. and, and not only dead, you should be dead and in hell. And uh, <laughs> and it's like, it, it pisses me off. But the, the interesting things um, that's been coming out of it is uh, being on the right, but also appreciating like legalization efforts and stuff like that. Mm. Um, Minnesota has passed or they're, they're working on a bill right now where if it passes, it will be a two year survey of popular hallucinogens hmm. to see if they have therapeutic or medicinal value. So you've got four 40. No, sorry. Four nil to man sitting in the football. Oh, nice. Nice. Um, so you've got uh, like LSD, MDMA, and uh, psilocybin are the first on the list. And so they're going to do a two-year survey to see if there's a medicinal value for them. Because in America, their schedule, their schedule A uh, or Schedule 1 or whatever controlled substances, which means they have no medicinal purpose. But yet tons of people use hallucinogens in medicinal and therapeutic ways. So now they're going to actually start studying them. If they study them and find a path to legalization of those – then pharmaceutical companies can actually like, and I'm not talking about the big annoying asshole ones. I'm talking about the independent ones can actually take up some of these drugs and start fixing some of the problematic side effects that they have mm -hmm. and maybe find uses for things. If there even are any, we don't actually know what the bad effects of these are because they can't do long-term testing because of the government classifications. So it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy to see shit like that and go, Oh wait, maybe we're going to get, some results that aren't just pure propaganda. But of course, maybe we will too. I mean, maybe it'll all be propaganda, but we don't know. And and I'm hopeful. Hmm. I'm hopeful because I think I think all of this shit and what we've seen specifically with marijuana is that um so much of this was based on other bullshit. Yeah. Uh, you know, going after other industries, going after the hemp industry, the cotton industry going after the hemp industry is a lot to do with the illegalization of marijuana, yeah. for example. And it's like, you, the, that's the best not take, harm, that's business. <laughs> the, the best take on weed that I think anyone has ever had is the South Park take, frankly. It's like, weed isn't going to destroy your life, but it just makes you okay with being lazy. And that's not good for you, you know? And yeah. that, that, to me, that was what, that honestly, I used to smoke a lot of weed when I was younger. And I, you know, I stopped smoking a couple of years back. Just, I, I it wasn't even because I, I wanted to stop smoking. It was just, I was just busy all the time. You know, yeah. like, I, you know, I had family left to deal with. And so I just, you know, so for like two or three years, I just haven't smoked any weed. And it's just, it, it's in this time that I realized that, yes, actually, that is exactly the right take. Weed isn't like some ultra deadly drug that's going to kill you, obviously. But it does make you okay with being a fucking loser. And it's not okay to be a loser. You know, it's not okay to just be some slacked out stoner like I was through my fucking 20s. You know what I mean? Right. And, I uh, I fully agree, but I also don't think that that's the government's job. No, no, I, I agree. I'm yeah. not saying it's the government's job. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not saying it's, but like the problem with the propaganda is that it was not true, you know? Right. Like, it, like you can propagandize <laughs> people with stuff that's true, you know? Like the, the, a realistic assessment is like, look, yeah, it's not the end of the world, but like not only do you demystify it, right? So you make it less interesting, but also it's real what you're telling people. It's not like this fucking line of bullshit that they discover is bullshit. And then they don't trust anything you say afterwards. Right. You know, like I, know. I hate weed. Uh, like I don't like the way it makes my brain function. I get really fuzzy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's indica or sativa or whatever. Yeah, my yeah, brain yeah. gets fuzzy. I get slow and it makes me extremely uncomfortable uh, yeah. in that way. Like I've, I'll do it on rare occasions because it's funny, like on a local yeah. live stream or something. But um, other than that, like I never do it because yeah, it's exactly what you're saying. It, for, for me, it slows me down. It makes me completely unproductive and I don't yeah. want any part of that. But for other people, it doesn't do that. Uh, and so I'm like, can, can the government just let us make our decisions? Like yeah, yeah. I, I get to drink all day, infinity drinks. Yeah, and and liquor is phenomenally yeah. worse for me than weed. Yeah. And, and it's, it's like it's not like we don't have a long track record in civilization of knowing what alcoholism does to people, you know? right? Mm. And it's like, so 
why are we and and believe me i don't want them to try prohibition again but what i do want is just the recognition that we get to make our own choices and Mm. and if we don't propagandize people on this stuff and we actually give them honest answers a lot of them will still make those right choices like yeah. People will still go, yeah, maybe I'll do weed at a party from time to time, but I'm not going to sit around smoking it all day because I don't want to be a fucking loser. And the thing is, right, the, the conservatives will be like, yeah, but what about those people who become like total down and outs? And I'm like, okay, well, let's just say if you become a total down and out, then the government is right to pick you up off the street, get you cleaned up and put you on some sort of program, right? And they'll be like, oh, but what about your rights? It's like, Lord, your right to be a crack addict on the, on the fucking streets. I don't think you're going to notice, you know? And yeah. you're like, oh, that's that's not libertarian. It's like, okay, I'm not libertarian. Now what? You know? Like, I don't care. Like, if I'm if, leaving like, the this... stream right now. Sorry? <laughs> I said I'm leaving the stream. <laughs> I'm just fight, kidding. fight, fight. Oh, oh, trust me. I Like, man, I've got a hard line of uh, ideological attacks on libertarianism. Jesus Christ. Oh, I know. But, but the <laughs> but the <laughs> but the point is like, you know, okay, fine. Look, but it like there's a very it doesn't have to be this like all or nothing, right? If yeah. if there's a person who doesn't have any friends or family and they're just crack addicts on the street, like you see the videos going around social media of San Francisco all the time. Oh right? god, the people just like you're howling yeah. on you know, half naked, can't see. Look, just that person is not someone who is functioning and enjoying the odd spliff. Right, that is yeah. someone who's fucked. Go and help them. Pick them up off the street. They're not going to know. They don't know where they are. You know. Yeah. You, you, yeah. They just need help. Go and help them right now. You know. That's all you need to do. And it, you don't need to, you know, be like a wild-eyed zealot about it. Just be reasonable. Be like, oh yeah, no, that person probably looks like they need some fucking help because they're literally howling at cars. Uh, we're going to go and put them on a twelve-step program. Put them up in a fucking hotel. Whatever we do with them, get them sorted. You know. But for the other people who are like, oh, you're a college kid and you smoke some weed in the bathroom. Okay. Give them a detention. I don't know. What do you want? Like, you know, it's really interesting. All or nothing, you know? What's really interesting about your perspective, um, which I agree with, actually, uh, as, as a libertarian, it's like, so for me, libertarianism recognizes some necessity of government for organized civilization. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, for me, libertarianism is a perspective where we go, I want to start at zero and say zero is maximum freedom, recognizing that zero is unattainable. Like we cannot have complete nothing because there would be no respecting or no enforcement of any rights, no respecting of any rights. So, okay. So, but I start there. I don't want to, I don't want to set my barometer way down the road. I want to start it here at zero and then move as far as necessary and only that far to get to freedom plus order. So that's, that's, and and that's kind of what I look at what you're saying. And, but the interesting thing is conservatives become wildly libertarian despite professing a lack of libertarian perspective or yeah, like that weird, libertarianism is wrong. But on this issue, they're like, well, that's not libertarian. It's like, but you're not libertarian on anything. Yeah, exactly. So you throw money exactly. at every problem. Yeah. And it's, mm. and it's not wrong. The, and then you get like liberals going, oh, that's paternalistic. And it's like, yeah, it is. Yeah. Cause look at that person howling and twisting on the floor, biting the pavement. I feel like a bit of paternalism is appropriate for that person. Actually. <laughs> and aren't uh, you, you know, supposed I, to be compassionate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. I, I think when he's cleaned up and realizes what's happened to him, I think he'll appreciate it. Actually. Guys, I, can you please <laughs> stop taking a piss out of San Francisco? No. It's impossible to take the yeah. piss out of San Francisco. It, it, it's it, a fucking it, hovel. I, I don't know how they're filling the coffers, man. Yeah, it's literally <laughs> hell on earth for some people. You know? I know, I know. It's it's just like no, no. They deserve to be used as a model of how not to run a civilization. I have uh, I have relatives who live out there, and I'm like, I don't know how you do it, but I mean, I think they, you know, just don't close go eyes. any. They don't go anywhere that would be, yeah. you know. I know it's everywhere, but there are ways no, to no, avoid no. everywhere. Yeah, uh, I know what you mean. But it's like, man, I, I don't know how they do it. It, it also it costs so much. It's like mm. you pay so much for the privilege of living in filth. Yeah. Don't you have to uh, yeah, pay yeah. to leave as well? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, like, California, you've got a leaving tax. That's insane. It's like, mental. Fucking mental. But, uh, we can do come to Florida and collect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, come and fuck. take it, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's uh, I've got I've got three tattoos on the menu, and uh, the come and take it cannon is one of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I just uh, honestly, they, like this this whole this whole position of like, you know, like um, 
the I, it's ideology, man. It's all ideology. Where it's like, no, I have a set of a priori rules that say I can do this or I can't do that. And it's like, no, fuck that, fuck that. Sometimes you've got to do something that is unpleasant in the moment but needs to be done. And like sorting out drug dealers off the streets, and that's the humane uh, drug addicts off the streets. That's the humane thing to do, man. It's also like, don't you want to live in a city that doesn't have that? Yeah. Like, they don't want to live like that. You don't want to live like that. Just sort it out. Yep. No, I agree. When did Just Escape a... from New York become a documentary? Oh, um, I... Somewhere about 2012, I think. I watched it the other day. I love that movie. I love that movie every Good time count. I watch it. It's I haven't so seen good. it since I was a kid, actually, so I can't really remember it. It was on, uh, so I do, I do Twitch watch parties. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, like every Sunday, and it was on the other day. This past Sunday, though, I watched such a fucking classic. I watched Howard the Duck, <laughs> which classic. Like it, it gets it gets panned as like one of the worst movies ever made or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. when you watch it, it is so like perfectly ridiculous. Like it's it's insane. And I forgot <laughs> I forgot the whole like plot of it entirely from when i watched it you know 20 years ago or whatever who's the chi who's the chick in it again it's it's the chick from back to the future uh leah leah thompson. marty's what leah, mom, right? <laughs> leah thompson and she is smoking hot in that movie oh yeah and uh yeah she's there and uh yeah so he's he's like with her she's in like a, a an all chick punk rock band which is awesome and um and then the uh the principal from ferris bueller is in it and he's like the scientist yeah i, I know what happened with him <laughs> he got he got picked up for the old cp but yeah. uh but he yeah. uh he gets they it's it's actually uh, uh i think it's canonical with event horizon what howard the duck yeah so if you don't remember what happened in howard the duck no earth has a space turbo laser that they shoot for some reason and it hits howard on his planet and sucks him back to earth that's how he gets to earth that's why it's only him from the duck planet he he gets there they're trying to like send some signal or whatever but it sucks him to earth well when they're trying to send howard the duck back to space to his duck planet by reverting the polarities on the turbo laser or whatever yeah. something happens and it misses and it shoots past all the planets to the beyond the oh. place away from the planets and it brings home one of the dark overlords of space oh. Oh. to wreak apocalyptic Lovecraftian havoc on the planet. They literally sent a space laser into chaos and brought a demon lord back to Earth. And this is a lot more interesting than I remember how the duck being. Yeah. Exactly what I was thinking the entire time. I'm like, oh my god. So this scientist, the the principal from Ferris Bueller, <laughs> yeah. he becomes a dark overlord of the earth and his power <laughs> is growing and he's right. gonna take over the thing. Well, it's kind of realistic and, that and yeah. bring his other dark overlords. Like the, he wants to go back, fix the laser and shoot it and get the yeah. other dark overlords there. That's the whole plot, and Howard has to end up stopping him. But the whole time, of really? course, the the spooks from the uh, the. I'm gonna look this up. I'm not sure I believe this interpretation. This, I, of I, I the swear dark. to God, this is the plot. <laughs> this is the exact like. I'm not even any of this. I'm not even stretching this. <laughs> and I'm like, this all because I'm like, this all happened in this. I'm sitting there watching it just on Sunday, and I was like, this movie is so much better than I give it credit for or ever gave it credit for. Cause this plot is awesome. And it's also just funny and goofy at the same time. Oh wow. You're telling the truth. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this sounds fucking ridiculous, Nick. It is. It was the most ridiculous. And I had so much fun watching it. I yeah. would encourage everybody to give Howard the duck a second chance. Okay. Yes. It's goofy and stupid, but it's also yeah. got this story that is more interesting than any of the shit. Marvel's been putting yeah, out. Yeah. Lately. Yeah. And ironically, Howard the Duck makes a cameo in the latest uh, Guardians film. Yeah, he's uh, in the collector's collection, right? Who the fuck? No, no, in the How latest the one, the one that's just come out. The 2020s Renaissance. Oh. Like, if all the but films have been resurrected in the popular consciousness. <laughs> what, Howard the Duck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why did you put that in there? Yeah. But, uh, no, what it's... Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's 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 good. It's good stuff. The special effects are fun and awesome. 
I mean, they're totally eighties, yeah. But uh, but they're practical, so they, as bad as they look, they still look better than anything that the nineties produced with uh, with CG. You know, I I was thinking about um, uh, special effects and like the practical effects, and I do think there is an inherent advantage of actually physically being real that they have. Like you know, yeah. no matter how shitty an animatronic it is, it's at least still a real fucking thing. You know, it has weight. It has space. Oh, go! Yeah. Starship Troopers was all; they were all real. All the models were real and then replicated. Um, mm. The ships, when the ship breaks in half and is exploding, that was yeah. a stop motion model. That's like uh, yeah. seven or eight feet long. It's this big thing that they made. And it's, you go watch Starship Troopers, and you're like, "This is great." Whoa! Yeah, this still yeah. looks good. Everything yeah. about it looks good. Alien. I remember watching them do the model work for Alien 3. Now, I know a lot of people don't like Alien 3. I have a soft spot like in my it. heart for it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and but the model work on that, how they made the aliens move in those alien movies was really, in number three, they did really well with it. Yeah. So yeah. The, the only bit in number three is literally the CGI that looks totally shit. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, and, but and it was totally stuff. shit at the time because people forget, right? Like back then, way back then, um, a lot of the time, like you couldn't, you didn't know that the three D models look shit. You know, like it, it, yeah. it's only when you go back to it you realize, oh, this is aged badly, you know? right? And that because you didn't know, because you you didn't really have a good frame of reference, right? And there weren't so, good uh, ones out there. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of the time, it didn't look bad, and it, you know, it looked persuasive to you because you didn't know the the alternative, um, which is why things like Jurassic Park still fucking hold up. Man. Mm. Like when you see it's like hang on this still looks pretty good actually yeah it does as well it looks really yeah. good it's yeah. wild actually you know, it looks better than much of today much better than a lot yeah, of today yeah. stuff which is crazy it kind of looks better than current jurassic park yes yeah yeah well that, yeah that's the thing because in jurassic park they used a lot of stop motion dinosaurs rather than just cgi you know so again it's a physical thing you know it's a real thing that actually existed so it doesn't look like I swear to God, my eyes are becoming really well attuned to computer generated fakery, and I don't believe any of it. Like I, I really hate computer generated anything these days. Like all of the fucking Marvel films, where it's like, here's this giant complex battle scene, and I'm like, pixels, fucking pixels, yeah, yeah, yeah. millions yep. of pixels, pixels or pixel punches. I don't care. I don't care. I hate it all. I hate it all. Wow. There we have the proof, ladies and gentlemen. He is a hater. Yeah. Don't Shit, use never... fucking pixels. Stop using CGI. Like you're lazy. It's a crutch. You know, make good movies. You used to make amazing movies. Hollywood fucking sucks now. And it Something doesn't something happened to you. It doesn't save money. That's the crazy hmm. thing. They pay so much for these yep. animators. It doesn't actually save any money. So it's like yeah. just just make it make it practical again, baby. Yeah. And and also the only the only thing CGI is good for is still scenes right like the backdrops in game of thrones and stuff like that right yeah think things that are just a, a giant castle on a hill yet yeah, you can cg that and it looks brilliant in because okay, it doesn't move sure. you know <laughs> things that move have weight and you're not simulating the weight you know yep. and you're not simulating the feeling of it impacting other things you're bad at it and it's not your fault because that's doubtless a really fucking hard thing to do just stop doing it you know just stop doing it. get a guy in the alien suit again you know, I was totally fooled by it, and I still am. You know, look how good the Predator costume still is today. Yeah, perfect, amazing perfect example. Perfect example compared to the CGI Predator of the most recent ones. Like, now, let me offer a mild pushback, though. <clears throat> Very mild. What <clears throat> about exclusively CGI things? For example, that's fine. That's yeah. Fine. That that's that's different. Yeah. Like, fine. Someone mentioned Final Fantasy was. Uh, was pretty good, which was fine Spirits. because it's an entire. Uh, the spirits animated. within you right. talking about, or are you talking about? Uh, I think yeah, I think it was Spirits Within that they were. Spirits they within. Just, okay, it just that says was Final Fantasy said. movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, when and it's entire Spirits animated. Within was garbage, but it looked good because the 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 motion of all of it is cons consistent, right? Right. But yeah. It's when you have the CGI next to something that's real, the flaws of the CGI, your eye is no longer deceived. You know. Yeah. You're, you're no, correct. I agree. You know, when it's something that's entirely animated, it's just like an animated film, right? That's fine, you know, because an animated film, you, it's all consistent. But it's when it's juxtaposed, man, it doesn't work. Um, I'm just going to go get another drink. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, okay. Fine. Okay, I'll use that. Oh, yeah, just leave us.
Uh, oh. I'll only use that opportunity to uh, <laughs> to uh, read some more supers. Then Optimus Jedi with the two dollars says, "You got the touch, you got the power, yeah!" Oh, that's so good. So Rise, Rodimus Prime. Strew with a five pounds this evening, gentlemen. I just finished uh, my Necromunda Corpse Grinder Cult. Keep up the great work or the good work. He, I, he said, he said, good. I said, great. Narcissism. I like how you, yeah, you boosted that up there. Yeah, yeah. I just, well, my ego was hurting yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it was Gotta... feeling a little bit uh, fragile, so uh, I needed to elevate that to elevate me. Uh, getting handsy with a ten dollars says, have you guys tried any of the new army painter speed paints? They've been pretty fun to use. No. No, they're like, just, uh, my understanding is they're very similar to the contrast paints. Contrast paints, yeah. That Citadel has. I, I have not, because I don't understand anything in the world. No, I, I get that. I've seen some really good contrast stuff, though. People, how they use contrast as a tool as opposed to a crutch. Yeah, now, for me, though, like, you guys have to understand that I don't, I don't paint off stream Ever. I, I never have time. This is this is the only time. That's why I'm painting the same fucking thing I've been painting every single <laughs> show. And I'll never finish, but it's okay. Oh, good. Uh, mm. DB with the two pounds says, have you seen the trans slash formers parody on YouTube? Yeah, I think so. It's fine. I have not. Uh, Jay, what, it's, it's just silly. Uh, yeah, Jay sure. with the two pounds says, for the panel, name your favorite superhero and why? Batman, because Batman. Ah, uh, my favorite superhero. <sighs> I mean, I was always just partial to Spawn. I like I like the Al Simmons character arc. Um, I like the the darkness uh, aspect. Not like he's not like a dark hero, right? Like Al Simmons isn't presented as a bad guy. He's just he made the deal. He's like, I got to get back yeah. to it. So. Power runs out. Yeah. And I, yeah, I like that limiting aspect of it. Um, Azzy, for jo Jonathan Aldridge says for £10. Azzy, my stepfather, loves the Beatles. They're great. I love the Beatles. I love them. Hunch the Dirty Roofer with the $2 is Mark David Chapman did nothing wrong. Uh, William Icebane with the $5 says the state of modern stories and lack of heroes with good morals is what one of the reasons I began my book currently 380 pages in and still going. Congrats, man. That's a writing yeah. a book is really fucking tough. Good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coco with the five dollars says, Oh shit, let's go. Just finished up the noon. I've been waiting for another one of these again. I'll be building two new MTG decks as I Magic the Gathering decks as I watch. Nice. Uh noble like weeboo. Hmm. I love watching. <laughs> I got the uh, I got the four forty k Magic the Gathering decks, but I, I don't have I, any other cards at all. I, I know nothing about Magic the Gathering at all. Okay, I used to. I played it in the nineties, about Same. ninety, uh, about ninety eight. I, I got I I got into uh, some Magic the Gathering. That would have um, been right after I sold my cards. Oh, okay. For fifty dollars. Even though I know nothing about... Oh, God, they probably won with a fortune now. Yeah. Uh, even though I don't know anything, you know, now and all that sort of stuff, yeah, I've got a few memories of your tap, your manners, and your, your whatevers. Um, I still love watching Rudy uh, open decks and just talk, go through the cards and talk the cards and the, the legendary. I don't know, I know who know. Rudy is. You see, he, he does a YouTube channel. Uh, he does a YouTube channel. And, Wait, uh, Rudy or Irudy? Irudy. R Rudy. Rudy. Okay, not Irudy from Geeks and Gamers. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, okay. And I just, I just love watching. I just love watching him open decks and talk about it. Yeah. Uh, Noble Weebu with a five dollars says Harry Potter went from Earth to a world of magic and fantasy. Learned how to use magic and went on an adventure. It's a sodding East Sky. Deal with it. Isekai. Isekai. The, uh, yeah, those are the, uh, like, the Japanese. anime, like, Sword yeah, yeah. Art Online, where you, yeah, you yeah, get yeah. sucked into the MMO. 
Yeah, and I, I, I like isekais. Uh, I need to watch Log Horizon. Have you watched uh, Overlord? No, I heard that's another one I've been told I need to watch. I watched the first, first and some of the second season, and then uh, my wife was going to watch it with me, so I, I quit, and we haven't gotten back to it. But I really like it. It's fun. I've heard that's good, and I need to watch it. Uh, Gray Soul, the twenty dollars is tyrannids of my fellow Mexicans. We swarm over borders in huge numbers. Uh, confirmed. Uh, Muck Plutin face with a two dollar twenty Brazilian. This had to be during the CL game, Champions League game. Flock Man City. Well, they won four 0 dude, and uh, Real Madrid are out. Jonathan oh, Aldridge uh... with the. Hmm? I got a, I got something to show you real quick. I got a Lego okay. set. I got a oh, Lego okay. set so in here you might be interested in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you, uh... Oh, nice, nice, nice. That Old Trafford. This is, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's a nice set. I, I, was, I was... If they did, uh... I would be tempted to pick one of those up depending on whose it was. What about this one? Like Wembley. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got that. I've built that. Got, got that. that. That's amazing. That's a real, I'm, that was a lot of fun to do, by the way. I have the Atari one as well. I don't have that. I, I, I'm the nod. I'm just, I, w I don't know where it would go. I've got so much shit. That's and why I've got I haven't rid built of so much shit. I haven't built any of these because I'm like, where am I going to put this? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't know. That is uh, the first question I ask myself, and then I hit buy straight after. I'll send you pictures of my uh, my Lego. My wife is a Lego fiend. Um, like she has the Titanic. You see my little CD over there, my little. No, I haven't. Oh yeah, that's. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I saw that on on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. There you go, my little Lego CD going on over there. Oh, dude. Dude. I know, I know. Dude. Look, I have already jerked off to that six times, so you better take it off camera or you're gonna seven. get a you're gonna get a strike. Seven. I don't care. For that, I don't care. Look, I'm Two Gavin seven. McGinnis. Here it comes. Whoop. Yeah, you are <laughs> coming out. But uh no, my, my wife's a fiend, so she just has like I just bought her or you're putting together Rivendell, right? I'm putting it. No, I'm actually. I've decided to put together the Ninjango City because they're releasing a oh. a new Ninjango City in about two weeks' time. I well, definitely I, want that, so I want to have this up and done now I've, before then. I've got her Rivendell, but she has nowhere to put it. Um, she's got oh. the Titanic on our dresser. Uh, That's huge. It's like, dude, woman, where? Where are you going to put all these? But I'll send you. I'll send you some pictures of our. Tower. I got the Eiffel Tower, and it's just in storage at the minute. It's because I got yeah, nowhere for that to go. Because the base, it's like four feet by four feet or whatever, or, or may, I think it's three feet by three feet. It's but I, I did get it. I did get it for investment purposes. Oh well, I don't. Oh. I don't shame people for Lego addiction because, uh, like, I, I don't it. have one, but my wife does, so I can't. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan Aldridge with a ten pound says, "As there is nothing offensive about the Star of David on a film." I didn't say there was. Apart, I am part Jewish. I don't see offense. I don't, dude. Jonathan, Jonathan, show me on the stream where I took offense. Yeah, Jonathan. Uh, yeah. Okay, touchy. The Bob the God Made Mad with the $20 says, Dear Az and Sargon, as the descendants of people with a proud naval tradition, uh, I love a good naval, when are you mm. going to follow your more sensible ancestors' lead and hop on a boat over to America? I hear you can get cheap rafts in the channel. <laughs> Um, uh, maybe, I mean, who knows? I'm on my, I'm on my two year journey. I'm on my two year journey at the minute. So, uh, what's your two year journey? Uh, lose a lot of timber. And, um, I, every month I'm putting money into a mortgage fund. Ooh. And two years, we're going to see how much we got. 
and when that's going to be enough to, to put down on the little house to put in the gun on the little house. Ooh, very exciting, man. Congrats. Uh, so I'm combining the two. I lose, hopefully lose some timber and lose money into a, a savings account. Get it, man. Possessed of normality with a five pound says, hi guys, painting space marines while watching you at the moment. Uh, will any of you be getting on the 10th edition box set? I uh, don't know. I completely missed out on ninth. I really missed out on ninth altogether. I don't play, so probably not. I mean, I, lo I love the concept of playing. I just, there's no time and no opportunity where I, I live in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we're blinked and it's already 10th edition. Yeah, that, that did seem to go really fast. Uh, and I joined just as 9th edition started. That's when I started to pick things back up again. Um, so yeah, that seems real quick. But, uh, sorry, 8th edition. Sorry, 8th edition. I, I picked it up when we just started 8th edition. And now here we are blinking. It's going to be 10th. It's like, wasn't wow. eight, wasn't 8th a disaster? No, ninth was the disaster. Ninth, ninth was? was okay. Yeah, uh, eighth was good. People liked eighth. Well, I think and, I'm thinking uh, of Age of Sigmar. Mm, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about that, so I couldn't. I couldn't say. But uh, I, yeah, te, uh, ninth edition was a fucking mitigated disaster. I have an eighth edition special edition Death Watch Codex in this giant metallic box that's got skulls and like chains all over it. It's awesome. Nice. But I never played. I don't know. I just I got it because it goes good on the shelf. I play. So I played a little bit. Sargon obviously plays a lot. Cal plays a lot more than. Uh, but I played a little bit, and it's fun when I play. But I don't know any tactics and shit. You know, it's just. Uh, Brian Al Alman with a twenty dollar says yeah. So how about woke hammer peddler mild winter minis, uh, or is it midwinter minis? Going full Bud Light on Bolt action? I don't know. I, I think I follow them on Instagram. I, have I don't no know. Idea. I, don't, I don't know what they did. I followed them on Instagram, I think, but I, I don't know what you're referring to. I don't know any of the things that he just said. Mm. But I believe you. I, 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 I follow Midwinter Minis on Instagram, I think. But I don't know what you're referring to on on the uh, the going full Bud Light. Look at as over here protecting Midwinter Minis, obvious sponsors <laughs> of the show, who have he's clearly shilling. He's doing it for money. <laughs> he's doing it for money, isn't he? <laughs> I hit William Ice Bay with a ten dollars. Is the story I'm writing can be summed up as an outsider in medieval uh, Moravia? who falls in love with a woman and what he's willing to endure and sacrifice for that love. Plus, he suplexes a hellhound. Fucking hell. But that also just sounds like a modern story about dating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're suplexing a hellhound. <laughs> That's just her roommate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Galacta, uh, Galacta Watkins with a five pounds says, Evening, chaps. Love your work. Have a great evening. How many Imperial Guardsmen in my army is too many? There's never too many. Never enough. Uh, plus, anyone got tips on doing human faces? Uh, two eyes, nose, mouth. Two ears. Do them like stick figure faces. That would be the funniest Guardsman ever. Just like <laughs> the smileys. <Yeah. laughs> like that That great... Did you see, ever see that brilliantly produced video with a guy literally just slapping on paint? On the uh, mini, so funny, mm -hmm. so fun. I died laughing. So funny. Uh, Dom Comster with a five dollar. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Says Carl. Did you see the blocked by Bits Hammer hashtag woke Warhammer account with thirty seven thousand Twitter blocks? By the way, I'm painting. I hear you, are, Carl. Ah, yeah, did you I, see I would. The... Okay. Sorry, go on. Go on. Oh, no, you, did you, no, did you see the blocked by Bits Hammer hashtag woke Warhammer account with thirty seven thousand Twitter blocks? I'm one of them, by the way. Uh, no, I didn't see that though. <laughs> Although I did see, I was just uh, having a cigarette and scrolling through my Twitter feed, and I noticed that uh, people have clipped the. 
promotion of Chud Hammer's uh, Warha- Woke uh, Warhammer Elves or Woke, Woke Hammer Elves already, and that's already going around. So yes, hello everyone. At DC, I got your PayPal tip of twenty pounds. Thank you. Towards the two-year plan, I'll put that in straight after the stream. Straight after the stream, man. Thank you. Uh, la, 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 um, thirty-seven thousand blocks. Fucking lot. That's blocks, busy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> busy block block. I see, yeah, the Ino Omega. How you doing, dude? Good to see, you, man. The twenty dollars says uh, Warrior Tier. The history of the universe is narrated by the Necrons. Is amazing. Go give it a listen. Love you guys. Yeah, that's the the Ogren stories. Same people. Ah. Their their orc one is really good. Uh, they're they're all. I mean, they're they're fucking great. They're like eight minutes long to twenty minutes long. They're really well scripted and voice acted. Check them out, guys. They okay. they deserve a lot of love uh, on their YouTube channel. Kyla Quinn with the five dollars says was driving past a horse trailer and a horse leaked on my car. All I could think was as shouting. Leak like a horse, hissing like a horse. Censored it by it? YouTube. I had to fill in those those censored bits. So I could work it out. Are you sure so, that wasn't uh, AOC's campaign bus? Oof. Something totally unrelated, by the way. Um, are you guys familiar with a YouTuber called Metatron? Uh, I, I I've heard, heard the name. Him, yeah, I've heard the name. Yeah. But other I, than I, that, I've, I've, I'm, I've seen a couple of his videos because he does history videos. And so he'll do like, you know, did Roman legionaries wear this kind of armor or whatever, right? Those sort oh, of videos. Sure. And you, YouTube have demonetized his channel. Oh, this is, um, this is, um, for what? Uh, yeah, exactly. this, is for Shad, what? this is Shad's friend, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. I, I just saw like the tweet going around and I'm just yeah, looking like, it... I've seen a few of his videos that they're, they're totally non-political as far as I can tell. Uh, as, as I'm aware, he made a video about the Cleopatra. Being like, yeah, she wasn't black; she was Macedonian, actually. Um, yeah. So, I mean, which is totally historically true, like, isn't it? Like, it's in no way inaccurate. Nothing controversial about that. I love that, that is Egypt to- is suing the movie production company. The state, yeah. the state of Egypt is suing them. Yeah. I mean, I she's... watched the first episode of that, right? And it literally is just making almost everyone in it black, just for the sake of them being black. And at the beginning of the um the the very first episode, the female the, the the black lady historian they've got on she's just like well i think it was like her, her mom or some old grandma, grandma told her that cleopatra was black and therefore she was black and that's it and it's like yeah, don't believe black. what they tell you at school she was black so yeah. she's like okay that's uh, i'll take that as fact then yeah and it was just like yeah but that's not true and why would you propagate that as a fucking lie but the, then, the right and, and so the well, whole the, sorry, go on, sorry, go on, sorry go on. well yeah and so the thing is this this has knock-on effects for the rest of the series, right? Because they've got to talk about how Ptolemy, who was one of Alexander's generals, uh, became the pharaoh of Egypt. But then they have to try and distance uh, Cleopatra from the Ptolemy family because, of course, he's Macedonian, so he's not black. Uh, but the thing is, she's a direct lineal descendant of Ptolemy. And so it's like, okay, and, you know, the, the royal family marries into itself, right? So, yes. uh, you know, yeah, but see, you, you're overlooking one thing here. Yeah, go on. Alexander was black. Got cucked by that big BBC. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did overlook that. No I one did. wanted to talk about it. That's what happened. That's that's how Cleopatra's black. That History baby just isn't out. ready for that conversation. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank God Netflix is raising it, right? But the, <laughs> but the thing is, her dad on his deathbed is pictured. And it's like, right, his name's Ptolemy. So, because he's like Ptolemy the seventh, like the grand great 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 grandson or whatever, and it's oh, like, yeah, and yeah. he's black. Okay, what what are you doing? You know, like the the consistency of the lean, gene, genealogy of the Ptolemy family is totally fucked because of this original lie they tell at the beginning of the story. And it's like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? But the direct the showrunner whatever said, this is our reimagining. Oh, so they know. They know that they're taking license with this, which is bullshit because it's meant to be historically accurate. It's meant to I mean, be documentary. I mean, they literally call it a documentary. So if you admit you're taking license, if you admit this is a reimagining, how the fuck can people calling you out on it be called racist? <laughs> but yeah. this, this then puts it in the same category as the movie 300, 
with its fucking yes. war rhinoceroses. Well, that's probably. I bet you three hundred is more fucking please. accurate than this stupid documentary. Well, that's the thing. Three hundred is now a documentary with the same plausibility. Yes. And it's like, oh, for fuck's sake! I, you know, I don't even care if they're like, yeah, this is a fan fiction, or whatever. You know, this is making carry on fucking Cleo, Carl. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's got the it's, same historical relevance. Yeah, but it's it's just so preposterous, and it's like, but why are you doing it? You know, like, it, how does this help black people for you to tell this big brazen public lie? But it doesn't you know? have a real. See, th this is the interesting difference to me between this and Hamilton. Because in Hamilton, you know, they, 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 you know, they obviously have a predominantly minority cast, except for King right. George, but it's a device. No one is trying to pretend that the founders of America were black, Hispanic, or Asian, right? Like, right. no one's under that illusion. And that's, uh, that's why, like, I, it kind of annoys me when people get pissed off about Hamilton. I'm like, I, I kind of get what he's trying to do here. He's trying to make an in-group, in out-group argument with England and the United States. Okay, so, and, it, and he's maybe trying to make this story a little bit more relatable uh, by use of hip-hop and stuff like that. So it, it doesn't make me mad at all that Hamilton does this thing because right. no one's trying to sell that Hamilton is, uh, what, Lin-Manuel Miranda, I guess he's uh, Latina, right? Or Latino. Mm -hmm. Latina, either way. Um, so that doesn't bother me. But then they they pull this shit, and it's like, no, this is the problem. Yeah. But in that is vein, I, I want Lin-Manuel Miranda to do the story of Martin Luther King, but with an all-Irish cast. I think mm -hmm. that would be fucking great. <laughs> Until well, Ryan Gosling can, is Martin Luther King, I will not rest. Yeah, and Mike Malcolm X can be German, but yeah. <laughs> that yeah. would be the shit I've ever seen. But this is the thing. It's like, this just does not help black people, and it makes... The people trying to help, or theoretically trying to help black people, just look like brazen fucking liars, you know. And it, it just, oh, I just, I don't understand why anyone thinks this is a good idea. Were black people clamoring for Cleopatra to be black? Was that like, were they like, we got to get there together no at the brothers' movement. meeting? Yeah, if that's like, what you're asking. It's like, it's you know, like no I, one was out on the street. Where's our black Cleopatra? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, well, they might not have been. Your street, sunshine, but in my yeah, yeah. street, in your street, yeah, yeah, fair we enough. were all out. We're up in arms. Yeah. Like, where we're was like, this idea? George the first black again. That's what we were doing. I just, I just can't figure out where it was conceived. That the, you know what we're gonna do, guys. This is our hill. This is the one yeah. we're gonna hit. It's like they were well, in Africa, I'll so they must have been black. Nick, in all seriousness, it's I'll, not like Egypt's I'll, gonna sue us, is it? <laughs> no, but I'll t I'll tell you what this is, and and you, you all know the answer anyway. There is there is a massive push at the minute to create revisionist history. Yes. And yeah, that's true. and all the boundaries are being pushed right now. Hmm. And some of the boundaries they're letting go. And uh they're seeing how far they can push. And and now they've got a lot of clap back on this, so they know where this boundary yeah. ends at the moment. But rest yeah. assured they'll go for it again. They will yeah, go fair. for it again. And this yeah. is it's all about revisionist history now. Hmm. It's so weird. It's, I don't know what it, I don't know what I don't know what advantage it gives. I don't know what the purpose because of it, because in fifty years' time, Nick. Uh, no, I just the, meant they'll that be they'll be teaching in school that uh, Cleopatra was black. That's why. Right. Yeah. No, I yeah. I get it, but I just don't get the purpose of her yeah. being black. Like I don't get what that does. It's not just her either. It's like all of the Egyptians are black. Yeah, maybe maybe that's the trick. Like the Macedonians are white. You know, there's a Macedonian. Oh, thank God. Now it's yeah. the black people who hated the Jews in Egypt. Yeah, right. Now the, now, yeah, now the blacks were enslaving the Jews in Egypt. That's that's basically the logical conclusion. Right? But the, the Macedonians are white, and so they're villains, obviously. You know, she never does anything wrong, even though she in real life is a scheming snake who puts people to death and that, you know. But she she's now a hero and a, you know, un, unvarnished hero. And it's swordsman. just like Yeah, she's a swordsman. Yeah, oh god. Of course, imagine. they're very common for the uh, uh never for the never, leading never, ladies of egypt to be prolific swords uh swords imagine fight. imagine the fucking you know she's she becomes like the pharaoh of egypt or whatever you know she she becomes the leader of egypt the sole leader of egypt i mean the pharaoh didn't need to wield a sword let alone if he was a woman you know like there's just it would be it's sacrilegious this is the incarnation of a god upon the earth why the fuck would you not protect that person why does that person have to wield a weapon themselves you know it's mad it's now is the series going to go all the way through when she gets her god pussy blown up by Mark Anthony? <laughs> I can only assume that it One does. One can only hope. 
Dude, I, I loved that story arc in Rome because oh, it yeah. was actually Polo plowing Cleopatra the entire time. God, Rome was Rome was such a good show. I don't care what anybody says. Dude, uh, it was unbelievably good. Who says it's bad? I don't know. Probably someone. Probably the makers of Cleopatra. Someone somewhere. Well, yeah, apart from them. I've, I've never seen anyone diss that Rome show because it was so well done. Because it was done with care and attention to detail. Yeah. And and yeah. just really solid acting, great storyline. Yeah. By the way, if you guys uh, if you like the Rome storyline and particularly uh, the um, Varanus and Polo story arc, yeah. there's a three book series by David Gemmel on the Trojan War. Um, it's a fictionalized retelling of the Trojan War uh, with a lot more political intrigue than the Iliad actually has in it, and uh, a lot more. I don't know if it is reality, but it seems like a more well-constructed <laughs> world, right? Of of like realizing how close all of these city-states actually are, how they have yeah. a lot of trade, how they all know each other. Like yeah. this is, all of these people would have been interacting and yeah. uh, incorporating Northern Africa into the question of, of Troy as well. And um, it's called, the three books are, it's Lord of the Silver Bow, Shield of Thunder, and then uh, Sword of Kings. And it goes from, prior to the the war and it doesn't have the mystical god aspects of it it's it's just like a kind of like a a literal historical retelling and it's mm. fucking great and there are two characters in it named banicles and calides which are basically uh polo and varanus they're mm. awesome you just my, call me? <laughs> my favorite character though is, is uh is in it he's a he's a mykene warrior named argurios and he's in the he's in the hospital tent um, he's a legend for having held a bridge by himself for 24 hours against an entire army. And they're like, how'd you do it? He's like, well, <laughs> they could only come at me two at a time. Hmm. So I just held my ground, right? He, very logical, but uh, hmm. he, he rescues his kid, but he, he gets poisoned or something. He's, he's rehabilitating. The kid sees him without his shirt on, and he says he only has scars on the front. Hmm. I'm like, oh, that's oh, manly as fuck. Yeah, Holy yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a... Uh, that series well, of books... If is great great if, if you're wondering nick the the trojan the iliad is a mythical retelling of the trojan war there is no, no that's the literal one is well the, there's no <laughs> historical <laughs> look diomedes I mean, got... next you'll be saying bullshit <laughs> was, like homer's odyssey is not real so i was gonna say if diomedes doesn't get to punch a god then it's definitely not historical you know what i mean yeah. i actually love diomedes in the iliad because yeah, um he's, he's this He's a maniac, and it's also implied that he could kick the shit out of Achilles. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it, yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's like he, he kind of just gets it's it's Achilles' story, so he doesn't get featured in it, but it's like he's there. But actually, my uh my favorite books of all time are Ilium and Olympus by uh Dan Simmons, and that is the craziest fucking Iliad story that exists. And it is I'm read it. Oh god. Uh, uh I I'm would really I would tell anybody who likes um sci-fi or historical fiction to read Ilium and Olympus. It is the most insane story I've ever seen. Uh, so, I, I love those books. Ulysses 31. That's a documentary, right? Sounds like a documentary to me. Yes. Yeah, what's that? Oh, Ulysses yeah, I don't 31. know what it is. But... Ulysses, oh my god, I'm so fucking old. Ulysses 31. Is this the cartoon? Yeah, it was the Homer's Odyssey oh, cartoon. I used to love that. Yeah, man. The thing is, it was it was so rarely on TV. I never I got never... to watch like the series of it. Right? Oh. I, I don't know why. I very rarely got to catch it on TV. But it has such never a catchy heard of it. intro as well. It was yeah, crazy. the music yeah. is incredible. Yeah. You can actually play the theme tune and not get hit as well. That's great. I'm, I'm I might just, have to go look that up actually. Yeah, I've never heard of it. I want to. I oh, hey, really... Nick, do you want to see? I... Do you want to see the opening? Should we see the opening credits? Yeah, well, the opening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As long as you don't uh... think you'll get struck for it. Oh fuck it. Who cares? They get moved over to the. Uh, oh, you just game. get demonetized anyway, like the video. Oh. So who who fucking cares? Who gives a fuck? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go with this one. Let's go with this one. This is once you've seen this, you you just be like, fuck. I got to see the show. I got to see the show right now. This is this is incredible. the 31st century. Ulysses killed the giant Cyclops when he rescued the children and his son Telemachus. 
but the ancient gods of Olympus are angry and threaten a terrible revenge. Mortals, you defy the gods. I sentence you to travel. That ship is amazing. This is incredible. In the kingdom of Hades, your bodies will stay as lifeless as stone. Ulysses, the way back to Earth has been wiped from my memory. Father! Oh, Father! You are alive, my son. <laughs> And this is the this is the opening. This is awesome. I know, I know. There is a, there is a five minute version of that song. I can't get over just how fucking incredible. awesome that was. No, like I remember, I remember that music especially from when I literally I must have been like seven or eight years old, you know. And it's so esoteric, right? This whole and I remember whenever it was on TV, I'd watch it fucking wrapped because I didn't know what the fuck was going on, right? But I remember really being into whatever the thing was. I've only got really vague, hazy memories of it. But like that is just so wonderfully again esoteric is the only way I can put it right. Mm. But look at all of the imagery that's in that. You know that is like a the, the, it's it's a, a part. You know it's the Western canon that it's building on. Right? Yeah, Ulysses represents again the the heroic masculine virtues. Right, he's not a ridiculous looking character, but he is you know a a great take charge, you know, father. Take charge. He's he's the head. Exactly. Yep. He he looks. He's a Chad. You know he looks like you know. Like the Greek perfection, Bearded, sort of long thing. hair, you know. But he's yeah, you like to say he's bringing peace and justice, you know, around the galaxy. He's looking after his children. He's trying to find his way home. You know, it's genuinely a retelling of the Odyssey. Yeah, it's like this. This is incredible. Why can't we make things like this anymore? Well, you somebody, know? somebody in the chat said we need a Dan Vask uh, cover version of that stat. That'd be I'm gonna, awesome. I'm going to let you to a little secret. When Dan Vask was writing the theme tune. For Friday night tights. He 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 messages and he went, What sort of influences would you like to see? You know, what what kind of sounds? And I said, This is what I said to Dan Vask. I said, listen to the theme for Ulysses 31. Yeah. That was I that was that. my that was my uh input for the type of type of uh vibe for the uh, fnt opening what, what i love like that there, there, there's so much packed into just that couple of minutes like okay it, it was you know, great he was th just, this, oh. so they're in space the yeah. gods of olympus are pissed with them use yeah. their godlike powers and it's like okay well hang on a second we've got a weird connection now between technology and science fiction and the divine Brilliant. Oh my yeah, God! I've got yeah. so much to tell you in just a minute. Keep going. This is this. Th there is so much compacted into that that you could explore in so many different ways. And it's like, oh my God! Okay, I don't know what's coming next. You know, that's the thing. I know the story of the Iliad and the Odyssey, but I don't know how this is going to be played out in mm -hmm. the future in space. You know, I because there's going to be aliens all of it. Who knows what's going to be like? And I'm I'm assuming that the series is full of references to the Odyssey, but like, well, I mean, there's so, defeated the Cyclops at the start, ex so exactly, that, you know, right? Yeah. So obviously, it's going to be, but it's obviously going to be imagined in a really novel way, and it's just like this is just a fascinating, engrossing concept, yeah, you know, on the face of it. And ah, oh, man, I'm gonna okay. go watch all this now. I'm glad. I'm okay. so glad you reminded me of this. I'm gonna go yeah. watch. It. You have to read nice. Ilium and Olympus. Do let I? me set. The, let me set the stage. I believe it. I believe it. This is uh, this is the intro. There's no spoilers here. Mm -hmm. The intro starts with a 19th century scholar on the Iliad being resurrected 3,000 years in the future by the Greek gods, and he is assigned along with a uh, a morphing belt 
a cloaking or not a cloaking thing, a morphing belt, a teleportation thing, and uh, and and some other thing. He's assigned to watch the Iliad happen in hmm. real time and use his knowledge of it to make sure it's going the way it's supposed to because oh. the Greek gods are post-literate and they don't know the story except for Zeus. And so his job, along with some others, all of these other scholars, are uh, is to watch the Iliad. They know who's going to die, so what they could do is they could take their morphing belt and quantum shift into that person's actual character to get close to the action, but knowing they're going to live through the story. Yeah. Right? right, right. He gets fed up with it, and he decides to become Paris and go fuck Helen because wow. fuck everything. Oh, fuck say Paris. That's how it starts. And it like it goes, it's so it he, gets he, way he starts the whole thing. Yeah, and, and he fucks up the entire timeline. <sighs> but then everything is crazy. The gods are actually like there's I, I don't even want to say too much more. Um, yeah. but you have you have Shakespeare brought in, you have the Tempest, you have the Moravex, you have uh um, holy fuck! You have uh, Caliban uh, brought into it as well. You have all of these literary sources. There's a a Russian series of writings called The Wandering Jew, which is brought in. Like all of this stuff intertwines into this one story, and it is catastrophically insane. Ilium and Olympus by Dan Simmons. They are. Uh, I swear to God, it's the best story I've ever read by a long shot i've read it probably the the two books i've pre read them probably three or four times and i'll probably do it again in the next uh, couple months ah, they're so good i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna look it up Ilium mm. and olympus in fact do, do us a favor when after the stream dm me the title yeah because then I'll, I, I'll get it when i'm at my like computer next yeah uh, absolutely i'll get it off amazon or whatever yeah Ilium Olymp Ilium olympus literally yep right. i'll send it to you like this is the thing like the I hate this general disrespect of the Western canon, and it's. I know that. Well, I know why they're doing it. You know, we all know why they're doing it. They don't because they hate white people, right? And mm -hmm. they're like, oh, well, this is the, this is the base of white civilization. So, okay, maybe it is, but also, um, a lot of it's really fucking awesome. Like, there's no reason only white people have to like it. You know, like these are you know universal heroic values, are they not? Yeah, and those are those are all present in these books. Like yeah. heroism is celebrated. Uh, yeah a return to literacy and making things like the, he, humans yeah. have to relearn how to cast bronze. Mm. They, they recreate a bronze age. Oh, the, do you guys familiar with the Voynich manuscript? Do you remember that yeah, thing? Yeah, 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 That's yeah. brought into it as well. Like right, everything right. is in here. It is fucking wild. That's cool. Uh, Sounds awesome. Yeah. I, I, I can't express enough how much I love those books. Right, okay. Oh, right, I will get it. I will get it. God, it's making me want to read them again. Fuck you guys. We didn't do this. We did this yourself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I just get excited every time I talk about it. Mm. Uh, I really the last should do like Russian with a two pound says, Hey, Saga, I'm loving this new channel to sub to. Thank you, dude. Oh, I think he's talking about my pondering channel. Oh, go fuck yourself. I created a little <laughs> gaming channel called The Pondering. <laughs> uh, but we, because I've, 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 I've just, like, in the evenings, I, like from about like nine o'clock onwards is the time I get to just sit down and paint and do video games. And so I just was, I haven't made a video, like I, ha I haven't made a video in like two years. And I was like, ah, oh, I'd like to make some little shit game videos, you know, yeah. for some fun. And I've just been really enjoying it, you know. So it's just the pondering. It's just where I post like little shit gaming videos, but they're, they're really good fun. And uh, it's just what I do on my downtime. Hambly should make a, uh, a competing channel called The Poundering. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna drop in the uh, private chat uh, the link for the five and a half minute intro. For you oh, yeah. I'm gonna go <laughs> oh, find yeah, that damn it. series and got watch it. Got it. it. All right, fuck it. I got it right here. Fuck it. If you want to, I don't care. I do I'm actually up. really. Well. I re I was really enjoying that. I mean, it's all right. This is this is here, this man. is the this is the long version. You're just gonna play it. <laughs> yeah. Look at look at look this at that. That's such a great. Iconic image. It's got a fucking cloak. So we get all of it. Mm. The synth. <laughs> fucking love synth music. <laughs> I like a uh, second frost super chat here. Three successful gents like yourself still hobby and gives me hopes of a father to young ones. 
I'm sorry, you do. Dude, ah. dude, there, there is nothing that stops you from doing these things. You just have a much more restricted time. Frame. That's all. Yeah. Get a hobby. Also, guys, seriously, get a hobby. Yeah. Get something you love. Don't give a fuck. Do the thing you love. Even it doesn't matter what people think. This is so good. Guys, perfect like eighties. Rock. It sounds like the Scorpions. What What I love about this era of music, I'm not really a fan of a lot of these songs, but one of the things that I've really learned to appreciate is the total lack of irony. This, this is, like, it's genuinely sincere music, and I really... We don't have that. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah, they, so, he's absolutely throwing themselves into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but it speaks of a much more innocent civilization, right? A civilization that wasn't debauched by communists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had yeah. faith in itself because this was made during the Cold War, you know. But like, this is this is just, no. We're the heroic West, though. God damn it. We're the we're the solar men who conquer and win and bring peace and justice. That's what they believed in themselves, and we don't believe in that in ourselves anymore. And it's gutting, you know. I hate it. And all of that is represented by someone's ability to go. Yeah, and not care about it. <laughs> not gonna fuck. Not feel embarrassed in the slightest. Yeah. We used to have such a great world, man. Like honestly, I do, honestly, Zoomers, you do not know what has been taken from you. I swear to God. You don't know. No, I mean it. I really mean it. Like we used to have a wonderful world. Oh, you don't yeah, know I how know. many breasts you have I missed in it. movies. Yeah, yeah. I fucking lived in it, mate. You should yeah, see exactly. what I mean. We, what we I... lived in it. Oh. We literally, we literally lived in it, and it yeah. was amazing. And look what they've done to you. You know, we are no, ruining it. Ruin we it. genuinely feel for you. We really do. <laughs> The very nature of this, being able to praise a hero, you know, where do you get that now? You know, draw fucking talk is the closest that Zoomers will get to the genuine praise of something that is called a hero, you know, and it's George fucking Floyd, <laughs> some yeah. fucking drug addict, does with fentanyl over this. To be fair, he was really good at fentanyl. Yeah, he was the king of fentanyl. Fucking. He's really good at holding a knife to pregnant women as well, apparently. Every TV program we had was like. Not like this necessarily, but you know what I mean. Like we, we, it, we, you could feel that the people with the right values were in charge of the civilization, right? Like they weren't. Like there wasn't a constant, constant assault on the civilization itself. I don't yeah. know how to describe it. Like it just wasn't like this. It didn't feel like we were in the no, we actually thought our civilization was good and uh, communism was bad. Yeah. We had a clear line that said, you know what? Uh, making people starve to death by the millions is wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's not so good. Total communist, total state domination of society, bad. No heroic individual action, good. Oh, it's such a good world. Oh, and also the hero has time to be a dad. Yeah, no, 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 oh, yeah. Like, man, like, it, it's small things. It's like, literally, I would just go out, you know, I would be 12 and just go out and I'd be out all day on a Saturday and I'd come yeah. back at nine o'clock and my cheeks would be red because it'd be cold. 
And my parents were like, hiya, you know, blah, blah, dinner's in the microwave, whatever. And there'd be no panic, no paranoia. No, oh my God, where have you been? You know, it was just a different world, man. Yeah, it's <sighs> weird. I my my kids like we're so you gotta stay by the house. Yeah, yeah. You same. know, where we can see you and stuff. And and same. it's like, man, when I was when I was some of these kids' ages, I was just on a bike and gone. Like I was yeah. just, my parents knew I was coming back. Oh, it's yeah. Saturdays. Uh, we'll be out, I'll be out the door at uh after breakfast, nine, eight, nine yeah. o'clock ish. No, not for your and, mates. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, you knock, you get a couple of mates, and then you're out to the field, yep. and then you just be playing football, cricket, something. That's what you'd be doing. You'd be doing that all yep. day, and then you you come back at tea time. Yeah. When I, when I was um, yeah, when I was thirteen, right, we moved out to Germany. Uh, to the, the that RFK explains so. it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, no, it, no, no, no. <laughs> but you think you wouldn't know now. you were in Germany. This, this is how I know what colonies are like, right? But the thing is, you, you, you know, we'd we'd get on our bikes, thirteen, fourteen, and we'd ride into the local German towns. And it was it was the same sort of experience, you know. It was all totally safe, or completely, you know, we'd, you'd ride like five miles one way, get to a bunch of German towns, you know, it, have some food, you know, get some drink, some cokes, like do whatever fourteen year olds fucking do. And then you just ride home in the in, in the evening, and it was yep. in, there was no fear of danger, right? It was mm. it was normal, like ethical communities of good people, basically. And it, it's just this is gone, man. Well, not gone, but you know what I mean. It's oh, it's, it's harder to find. Yeah, because yeah, I really I grew up in a, a suburb of Minneapolis, and that you know we would ride our bikes a couple miles to a different suburb, go to the comic book store, or whatever. It's actually yeah. where I saw my first Warhammer models was at the comic book store, Phoenix Games in Apple Valley, right. Minnesota. Mine was and, in Germany. Mine was in a German Warhammer. Sorry, uh, just a yeah. Okay. No, it's like, and we just we just ride out. My parents were never concerned that we were not going to come home because there just didn't, there just was wasn't unthinkable. like obviously there was danger. Kids did get kidnapped. Like those things happen, but it it was not. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's actually like in, in literal terms, more dangerous for n most people out there, but it's certainly propagandized that it is. And it may be, I, I don't yeah. know, yeah. but it, it's certainly the common convention is that it is more dangerous. Back then it, it was just not. And it's yeah. like a kid getting kidnapped in the eighties would be like, well, it was it, international it's, it's unthinkable. News, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it's like an unthinkable thing. It, of course it happens, but it's not expected. Now you're like, you can't go out. Someone might just literally snatch you. Yeah. Someone will snatch your bike. That will happen. Yeah. I know. Sure. But I mean, like, it, like you, you never heard of anyone go missing. You never knew anyone who went missing. You never knew anything that happened to anyone, right? No, yeah. no one you knew knew someone who had gone missing or been snatched or something like that, right? It, just, that. it just had never happened. And so that's why people weren't worried about it. I had a school. The only thing we had was a, a, a schoolmate of ours, um, she died in a car crash. Oh, that's just a tragedy, though. You know, which is just happens. just tragic. Yeah, when we're like fourteen, yeah, we had a. Uh, yeah, I, I knew that's a couple of people who had to deal with flashers, but that I mean that was <laughs> the extent of the weirdoness. Like they weren't yeah, grabbing yeah. kids; they wanted kids to grab them. Yeah, but still, I mean that's weird. But like, <laughs> but yeah, you just say "fuck off, weirdo." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you ride your bike away from them. Yeah. Or last them. That's the thing. It's a, to it's a totally different world now, man. And I'm not. I again for young people listening, being like, "You, ne you did not. This is bullshit. You're lying to us." I'm swear to God, man. <laughs> Before the era of like you know the mass immigration and stuff, like that, it, it was a different world. The, the the things on TV didn't hate us. They weren't yeah. trying to. Dis they were actually trying to give us life instruction on how to be better men. They genuinely were trying to make it, giving us good examples. And again, cynical capitalists giving us heroic examples of how to be good men <laughs> on every TV show. You know, what the right thing to do was. Optimus Prime would tell you what the right thing to do was. And your parents would not even question you watching it because they'd be like, well, obviously, you know, they, they like the, the, the civilization was in some way kind of holistic like that, right? Your parents. Optimus Prime would be reinforcing the message your parents would tell would be telling you, right? You, 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 your parents, tell the truth, be honest, you know, be loyal to your friends, whatever it is. And then Optimus Prime would do those things in the show, you know. He Man would do those, and he'd be like, "No, this is the right way, actually," because the rhetorical argument would be, "Well, look, you have a happy, healthy, flourishing civilization," and you'd look around you at the happy, healthy, flourishing civilization, like, "Well, obviously, this is true." 
You know, obviously it's better to have this value system. And now everything's perverted, everything's undermined, everything's fucking ruined. And oh, it's, it's so... F- the more I think about it, the more tragic I think of it. We got fucked. We got fucked. The other weird part about it is, like, <sighs> when you're talking about, uh, you know, you ride, like, several miles away, you're gone all yeah. day. We did all of it with no communication. There was no yeah. cell phone. No cell like phone. you, I, I had to carry, I know I had to carry, you know, a couple quarters in my pocket. If I ever yeah. needed to call my parents, say I was going to be late or something like that. Like you'd, you'd have to go find a pay phone and deal with that. But that was it. Like you weren't, there was no messaging system. It's not like every kid had a beeper or a fucking yeah. like geotag on them well, or something. What we uh, did is uh, we didn't have a couple of 10 pence pieces or whatever to do that. So if we were Reverse late, charge call. We would well no, we'd go home late and then we'd get a whooping. Well, yeah, yeah there is that too. That's yeah. what but we I mean, get. Like, how how many times did you actually call your parents to let them know there was a problem? I only called them when um, I if I was gonna never, be like 30 never. to 40 minutes late or more. Yeah. And it was not a problem. It's just like, oh hey, dad, we're still at the comic book shop. Uh, I'm going to be back in an hour. It just, you know, we lost track of time. He's like, yeah, yeah. cool. It's fine. Not a big yeah. deal. They just didn't want, my parents just didn't want to be sitting around worrying because they had other stuff to do. Mm. Like, it's not but, like they cared particularly that I was going to be late. It's like, well, we just don't want to sit around worrying that you're, that you're not here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the, 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 like I can, like, I remember my parents teaching me about reverse charge calls, right? In Britain, you'd call the operator and then you'd say, this is the number, I'd like to charge them. And then they'd phone the, the number, yeah. say, I have a call from Carl Absolutely. or whoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to accept the charges? And of course, you yeah. go, yes, of course, you know, because it was a very small amount of money back then. But if you're um, crafty, you'd say, Carl, I'm going to be late. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd yell down and they could hear it and then they wouldn't have to take it, right? Because the, the line was open. That's a great point. I forgot about that. Um, but the thing is... <laughs> I only ever did it once in my entire childhood. And I can't even, it wasn't for anything major, um, but I only ever did it once. And it's just like, it just, there were not the problems that, that people seem to have now. They just weren't there. Yeah, no, I agree. This mystical civilization. Those were the days. <laughs> Literally though, it, I saw, <clears throat> I saw, <clears throat> and this again, <clears throat> One of those things where it's just like, no, this was totally normal. What's wrong with you? And the Zoomers don't get it, right? Harry, the, one of the uh, younger guys at Lotus Seaters, uh, retweeted um, a picture of Metallica. In fact, I'm going to get his exact tweet up just so I can read it, right? Yeah. And this, this, this to, to him, it just occurred to me that this is totally not surprising to me, right? It's this picture of Metallica playing in Moscow in 1991. So not long after the fall of the Berlin Wall. And right. they've got 1.5... 1.6 million people watching, which is a massive crowd that goes to the So horizon. fucking insane to think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not he's as big like, as Hasselhoff would have got, but it's not bad. Sure. Well, exactly, exactly, right? That's exactly the point. He's like, it's completely insane to me that something like this is even possible, much less it actually happened. And it's like, no, no, Harry, when I was your age, it was totally normal for every rock band to have a stadium full of people that reached the horizon. Like in every yeah. festival, every year, every band, had these massive crowds and it was just totally normal. You'd see them on their videos and in the music videos and stuff like that all the time. You'd go to them, you know, you would be part of that crowd. You'd be my, you know, half a mile out from the stage, you know, and watching the band. It wasn't crazy to have this, this existed. This was a giant vibrant civilization. It all existed, you know, but Harry's like, it's crazy. that This could actually happen. It happened all the time. All yeah. It wasn't time. even, wasn't even weird. No, it, well, yeah, it wasn't even weird. And it's just like millions of people who don't hate each other and don't hate their own civilization would just spend a lot of time in each other's company. Yes. It's, it was normal. <laughs> it's totally normal. Not so not so much now. No. But there again, we've got we've got every every angle, government, press, yeah. TV, everyone pitting trying to cause division, 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 division. Yep. Hate your neighbor, fear your neighbor, fear this, fear that, hate them. You're hate worthless. Them. It's every everything, everything all over, just bombarded 24-7. Hate so your history, I, hate your heroes, hate your yeah. accomplishments, hate the things about hate your, your country. Like, yeah. Hate, hate your everything. flag. Yeah. Hate so yourself. Get... Hate your parents. Hate family life. Hate children. Yeah. yeah. Hate hate is hate, 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 hate. Yeah. 
Where do you think that's going to go, folks? Hey, I got into this, uh, a similar topic the other day when I was talking about police and I was bitching about police and, and them being agents of the state and, and the right simping for police in America Mm. for so long and then getting absolutely fucked by them on like January 6th and other stuff. And with gun confiscation and COVID lockdowns in there, and they still do. They're still like, well, but police are good. And it's like, they're not on your side. They're not. Yeah. They're, they are the government. But uh, I got into this and I was like, you know, the reason that someone doesn't walk into your house and murder you right now isn't actually the police. Like, they don't tend to stop people from walking in and murdering you. That They tend to clean up the mess afterwards. They're not stopping people from doing that. It's It's really just that. Most people, when society is working out, just kind of exist without the need to go murder someone. Mm. Like that, that is, it, it speaks to kind of this general decency that humanity has that it mm. can manifest. And I, I think it is going away to some extent. Oh, but yeah. like in the, when you, when you think about the difference in technology now and communication now, it's like that's all gotten better. Murder hasn't really changed all that much. And, and that's because it's not being stopped by technology. It's not being stopped by mm-hmm. policy. It's being, it's stopped on balance by someone going, you know, if I go out and just murder everybody, someone might murder me. That would be a messed up place. So I'm just going to go to work instead. Uh, and we're, we're like trying to get away from that. But it, it was kind of what reminded me of that when you were talking, uh, Sargon, about the, about just how we used to be able to have these things where people just existed together for a while. Yeah. And it wasn't weird. And it's like, that's how it should be because that's how people generally are. Well, in high trust Western societies, that's how people are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I mean. Low low corruption, high trust societies where everyone, like, again, when people aren't being propagandized to hate their own civilization, that's what you end up with. Yeah, exactly. Because they they have faith that tomorrow they're going to be able to buy food. Yeah. And And uh, their neighbor will treat them with respect. And that they'll, you know, they'll go to their job and they'll be treated fairly and they'll be given the credit for the work they do and stuff like this. And honestly, it feels like that's what we used to have. Well, my my neighbor used to when he used to mow his lawn, would just come into our our garden and mow our lawn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. We had a neighbor who used to he had a snowblower and we didn't. He would snowblow our driveway when it would that's snow so heavy. Nice. Yeah, just Never no, no Zuma will understand that feeling. Yeah, he didn't, didn't knock on the door and say, do you want me to do your lawn for you? <laughs> he just did yeah. his lawn, and he'd go over and he'd just do our lawn. But then you'd you'd go take your bins out, and if you saw he hadn't taken his out, you'd yeah, go you'd get take, him, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to help him out, because why not? Why the fuck not? If the gate was open, you'd close the gate for them. Or, oh, you know... locking doors, man. Jeez, we never used to lock doors. Like my parents didn't used to lock doors, right? When I left home, uh, like you know, nineteen or whatever, to go to university, I went to university in Coventry in a city. Obviously, you start locking your fucking doors in this city. Um, I come back, my parents live in Cornwall, and they didn't lock their doors. And I was like, "Why aren't you locking your doors?" I'm like, well, why would I? I'm like, "Well, I mean, I've got my reasons, but then I don't live in a nice cul-de-sac in Newquay, you know." <laughs> like, I, it, mm. that, that's when it really struck me. I was like, "Shit, man, these are texturally different, right?" There's a a yep. genuine like feeling in the air, you know, that you can like the, these people do not worry about their neighbors doing something horrible to them and stealing from them or worse, you know. They don't worry about that. None of them do. Because it's basically not going to happen. Exactly. It's like it's happened. the safest bet that it won't happen. Yeah. You'd be crazy to think it was gonna happen. It's weird, man. Oh, well, because you didn't live in yeah, wouldn't be exactly you weren't coming. Exactly. Fear ran down your throat. But also, the people around you weren't being propagandized to hate you or to hate, you know, the, the, the civilization. To... The BBC was rather objective. Well, I mean, even if they weren't objective, they weren't hateful towards their own civilization, no. right? No, they certainly weren't. They were, they were just, they would, you just come on the news and, yeah. oh, do, 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 I saw a really, really uh, interesting comparison. I think it was like, uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Mm. And it's just got a weather person in the U- uh, UK. Oh, yeah. I think it's the UK. And they've got the map up. Yeah. And it's got the temperatures. Yeah. And it's like, and it's in the Are summertime. Are they color coded? No, no, it's green. Right, there we go. It's just it's a green, green map of England, it's, right? It's a green map of England with 31, 30, yeah. 29, 
30, yeah. 31. Oh, shit. And then the other one is current day. And, and the, the map of England the is on red. Fire. And yeah. it's like red, 26. <laughs> red, 25. Yeah. Yellow, yeah. 24. Yeah. And it's just like, because now you got to, you got to fear the weather. You got to yeah. fear the fucking everything. Yeah. So it's just like that is so it's a subtle it's such a subtle thing and yet at the same time yeah. it's like just wow you know yeah. it's it's subconscious and real you know but it's also agenda pushing with all the climate change yeah. And oh yeah but you know yeah yeah so it's such an agenda as well We've be afraid the of the temperatures you've lived in yeah look it, look the look the UK's red. Well, do you not, do you not remember them saying there's going to be a heat wave? Last year it was. There's going to be a heat wave at 21 degrees. 21 <laughs> fucking degrees? Oh, fucking Lord, preserve us. Yeah, I try and keep the house get, at like 18, a, you know? So, <laughs> 18 degrees is like my perfect temperature, you know, around there. 21 degrees is... Lit, right, so let me... let me. Imagine. 11 degrees now. 16, 60, 70 Fahrenheit. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's not a heat wave. Seventy Fahrenheit. They were last it's year. I remember it very vividly. They warned, "Oh, there's going to be a weather heat wave, twenty-one degrees, 70, 70 Fahrenheit for America." It's like, are you fucking mental? Like they were like, "Don't leave your dogs in the car." It's like twenty-one degrees. Like, are you mad? Nothing. You know that is just perfect weather, clement weather. That's crazy. Ah. <sighs> Mad. Oh, oh shit, uh, lads! I have to leave. I have. Uh, uh, yeah, we are. We are up against. We're yeah. We're up against the clock anyway. Yeah, I'm taking my um, son bowling. Uh, we've got a, a father son bowling thing to do. So, um, I, I guess I could show real quick what I've been doing the whole damn stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, been yeah. dropping. Uh, I don't know. Let me uh get the focus out on this. I've been dropping highlight lines all over the oh, yeah. all the light painting. Oh I'll yeah, to, yeah. I'll have yeah. to go back and do some touch-ups, but uh, yeah, that's, that's what I've been doing. Is this uh, this light, light accent color all over him? So very good. Someday maybe I'll finish this guy. Maybe, <laughs> who knows? Uh, just quickly before you go, then um, Caligula gifted five memberships to the stream. Thank you, Caligula. Uh, Ian Soforth gifted another ten memberships to the stream. I'm just gonna quit. Uh, Brick Cormier with a fifty dollar says Sargon. I know you're not telling the truth about Optimus Prime. You are not a robot that transforms into a truck. There is no way you can identify with Prime. Stop lying and start telling the truth. You are good telling point. us a revisionist history tale. No, that's a good point. I, well I can't out. identify well with virtues and actions. I can only look at him and say, "But I'm not a truck." That's true. That's true. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. I, I would uh, love to see this. Save is, this is, you. is the one oh, for okay. you. Just forget. Thorin uh, Parbust with a $50 says, Nick, I've been waiting for 20 years to hear someone shout out David Gemmel, favorite fantasy writer ever. He wrote my favorite line in fiction ever from Storm Rider. You've shown me how to live as a god. Now I'll show you how to die like a man. Oh, it's fucking manly. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, uh, those David Gemmel books are are great reads. They're a lot faster than Ilium and Olympus. Um, they're all they're all really fun. All right, guys, I I love y'all. Thanks for doing this. We got to do it again soon. But yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Let me know when. To bowling, Just message so. me, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. Your 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 next next channel next. Ooh. Well, we're doing it tomorrow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, guys. Peace. All right, see you later. Peace. See you, bro. Uh, We'll wrap it up here then, because because Nick's yeah. going. It's getting late yeah. in the UK. Uh, everyone who hasn't had their super chat read, this gives me a great excuse to do a super chat square up on Sunday, which means we're going to have an afternoon tea with us. So apologies, but you've been you've been like exceedingly generous tonight. I couldn't I couldn't keep up. I couldn't keep up. You've been so kind. So sorry if you didn't get it read on the day. I will do a super chat square up Sunday afternoon tea with us. I will go through all the ones that I've missed. I do promise that. Uh, so join me then. That'll be Sunday, 2.30 p.m. UK time. Carl, anything you'd like to plug before we go, sir? Um, I don't know. Look at my The Pondering, just my my stupid gaming channel. If you want to see um, what my Eldar will oh, yeah, end up yeah, looking yeah. like, if I can get it to... 
nice on the smoothness of the transitions so yeah that looks nice i like it it's a good color bad, scheme it's right? good color scheme yeah it, it's it, I'll, I'll do some close-in photos so you can see it properly um, if i did eldar i'd do them red you know i was thinking about that but i actually don't like red for eldar like because mm. all of the current ones are on the box they're all red and it's actually I'm not, maybe it's the red that they are using yeah 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 it's an ugly red but i looked at that no i can't have that I can't have that I, I like a nice blood, blood red blood red on the yeah that probably would be good but to as good. dude lo love love doing these hangouts man these are honestly oh, genuine highlights when we do great that. conversation man it's great conversation yeah. it's great to have yeah. you on love talking to you love yeah. nickage yeah. uh so thank you so much for coming on everyone who came to watch tonight thank you so much indeed here's here's my here's, i've got my base going now that's a lot of base going on it's got my good, water got my, it's starting it's mm, starting it's mm. starting coming together uh yeah, it's, it's good that's this is gonna be a big build this is going up this is gonna be a big mm. one uh so massive 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 thank you to everyone who came to watch today mods thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it everyone who super chatted everyone who gifted members remembered became a member thank you so much for supporting the channel like i said super chat square up there on sunday 2 30 uk time afternoon tea with us until then you take care Bye for now.